Hello and happy Friday to all you out there, wherever you are and whenever you may be listening. Tonight's WKMC TV matchup is a Pennsylvania Heartland Athletic Conference cross-divisional matchup featuring the Shikalimi Braves and the visiting Mount Carmel area Red Tornadoes. My name's Jim Lesko. Beside me is my brother Dan Lesko. Jose Gonzalez supports us from the sideline as he always does. And together we're coming to you live from Sunbury, Pennsylvania at Shikalimi Stadium where tonight the Red Tornadoes will face off with the Braves for the first time since 2017. Now after a tough loss to start the season, Mount Carmel was able to kind of get back on track last week with a 48-20 win at Hughesville. They'll look to keep the momentum going this week against a dangerous Shikalimi team, Dan, that's 0-2 after losing a close one to Central Mountain in Week 1 and then at Loyal Sock last week. Yeah, Jim, I, it, you know, I think the, the goals for the Braves tonight are really going to be to get going offensively. Um, yeah. After putting up only 14 points in their first two games, uh, they'll definitely look to their senior backs, Colton Semko and Gabe, Gage Wolf, who both ran the ball with a lot of success last week. Um, so the multiple sets that this team runs gives them a variety of ways that they can attack you. But I expect to see a lot of that wing T split to kind of get the ball moving on the ground. Yeah, so they have the multiple sets for sure. Across the field, the Red Tornadoes, they're, they've got some variation, but really we're going to see what we've seen for most of Coach Dara's tenure here, and that's the shotgun double wing. Yes. They, they've kind of weaponized that with deadly effecti uh, effectiveness, and we saw that on full display last week. Uh, Feliciano from the quarterback position, uh, he ran for 100 yards. He was 9 for 112 and two touchdowns. Stellar had a touchdown. Verano had a touchdown. Uh, the Red Tornadoes are three. Two running backs over 100 yards. Verano near it. Uh, through three weeks. So do you think tonight, Dan, the key to the Red Tornadoes coming out on top is that run game? Well, Jim, I, th I think every week for, for the Big Red, it is, it is a key <laughs> yeah, to, to get that ball moving on the ground because that opens up those passing lanes. But I think, that, you know, even though the, the run game is going to be a key, I think the Shikolami Braves know that as well. And, and, and that uh, Coach Kaiser's uh, coaching staff has been probably stacking the box all week preparing for it. Um, so I think this week, Coach Darren needs to go to the air a little bit more after a lot of the success that we saw last week. Um, and I think it would serve him well to do that. Uh, the Braves run a, a three deep zone. It's, it's like a cover three. Uh, they split the fields up into thirds. And there's a lot of holes in those zones when, when you've got a quarterback like Feliciano who's been progressing like crazy and he can pick that defense apart. So I think he might have a good opportunity to put the ball in the air a little bit more than usual this week. Yeah, Feliciano, um, he went, what, 3 of 8 last week for 31 yards, but 6 of 13 for 87 yards and two scores on the on the year thus far. And we'll see the captains as they approach the as they approach midfield here, Dan. You talked about uh, Semko and Wolf earlier. They're two of the captains. They'll be joined, for the Shikolami Braves, they'll be joined by the se senior signal caller in Braden Wortman. Uh, for the Red Trails, it looks like it's Stellar, Nestico, David, and Verano. He'll serve as the game captain for tonight. So we'll, we'll see which direction you go there. Um, like we said, these teams haven't met since 2017. Uh, so it's it's a little bit of a, of a rejoin here, we'll call it. We wait and see how the how the coin toss goes. Yeah, Jim, it, it, you're right. It, it's 2017 was the last meeting. And I remember I remember coming out here every year, you know, either playing Schick at our, at our field or playing them at, at here at this stadium. And it's always a... Uh, Always a tough, a tough battle, you know, coming out here to Sunbury. These guys are always a tough team and always give the Red Tornadoes fits. So hopefully, hopefully Coach Dara has something dialed up for him. Yeah, it looks like we'll see that brave offense first, uh, first right off the bat here. It is a beautiful night here in northeastern Pennsylvania. We're just hitting seven o'clock now. We were, we were talking with some, some terrific folks up here in the press box before the game yeah. about how our week one matchups are had had gone in terms of just the weather and working through the rain. And, and even last week, I think, um, it wasn't necessarily uh, a, a downpour like it was in week one. Right. Uh, but it wasn't like 74 and sunny either, which is what we're looking at right now. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great, great game time temperature right there. That's, uh, you know, it's, it's not too hot down there on the field. The sun's just starting to set behind the trees here. We're getting an even better look at the field here right now. And... Uh, Looks like these guys are just about ready to go. The referees are definitely ready to go. <laughs> he's, 
Yeah, so if you're watching and listening, and our, our expectation is you're spending a lot of the time, your time with the Red Tornadoes, you're probably checking in each and every week. Uh, so on the Brave side, one one player you want to look out for, and Coach Kaiser had, had referenced him a couple times this week, uh, is number 82, Caden Kaufman. He's a 6'3", 205-pound senior. Uh, he'll catch some passes. Uh, he'll make some tackles. Certainly a, a tremendous athlete, and especially at that size. So keep an eye on, on that young man as the night goes on. For the Red Tornado, Stellar will be doing the kicking, as, as he is wont to do. Uh, for the Braves, it looks like back deep, you've got number 11, John Pfeiffer, as well as number 28, Chase Morgan. Yeah, we'll see where. Uh, we, we know that uh, Pfeiffer is a, a dangerous dangerous threat there. He's a big guy at receiver. We see him a lot. They, they throw the ball his way a lot. He's a playmaker, so we'll see if Stellar tries to keep it away from him. He has six, 370 pounds. They got a couple big kids on this brave side. The Red Tornadoes need to just keep everything in check tonight. But we're underway here. It's a low kick to Dan's point. It's gonna be taken by Morgan at the 15. He's gonna try to follow Pfeiffer. He's on the left side, he's down the sideline, he's making guys miss, he tries to cut back to the middle of the field, he'll be tackled at the 44 yard line, and that's where the where the Braves will start their initial offensive series of the night. Yeah, and Jim, that looked like Maddox, Maddox Reed making a really good recovery on that, on that kick coverage team, and coming back and getting Morgan from behind. But again, that was a, a good start there for, uh, for the Braves here, and really good field position to get things going. Yeah, it'll actually be the 45, so it's gonna be about a 30 yard return. We'll see what the Braves look like. It's Pfeiffer, it's gonna be twins to the right in in Hoffman and Pfeiffer. Wortman is in the shotgun. He's got, two, oh, excuse me, it's four wide. He's got two to the left, two. He's gonna throw right away. He rolls to his right, he's looking downfield, and he throws a jump ball, and it's incomplete. It was in Hoffman's hands, and that's what you get with a 6-3 receiver. You throw it up and give him a chance. A lot of red tornadoes in coverage there. It falls incomplete. Yeah, Jim, and that's, that's very, very well defended by uh, Garrett Verano and Dylan Farinato there. Looked like, uh, sorry, I'm, <laughs> lost Michael. my train of thought there. Michael Farinato. Michael Farinato, yeah. And it looked like Caden Hoffman did a really good job of, of going up and, and high-pointing that ball, trying to use his size. But credit to Verano and Farinato getting a hand in there and knocking that ball out. So now it's a heavy to the right. Hoffman's going to come back in motion across the formation to the left. He's going to drop into that tight end position. And now Wortman's going to run it himself. He'll be dropped by Verano, but not before he picks up about eight yards there. It's going to bring up third and... Yeah, give him seven yards. It'll be third and three, 11 28 left here in the opening quarter. Yeah, Jim, that looked like a really well schemed play there by Coach Kaiser with the... the, the Wortman going in, in motion, or I'm sorry, Hoffman going in motion. Wortman was able to make a nice read on that read option and find a hole in the zone there. So Pfeiffer to the right, along with two other receivers. Wortman's in that tight end to the left. It's gonna be the same play. Wortman keeps it himself. He's gonna slide. It looks like he started to slide a little early. He's gonna be short. It'll be fourth and a yard, and Coach Kaiser's got a decision to make in Red Tornado territory. Yeah, Jim, I think that, I think this is one of those plays where he's gonna he's gonna be going for it. Uh, they just checked out Morgan and checked in Gage Wolf, who we talked about earlier. Looks like he's got a little bit more a little bit more size to him than uh, Morgan does. Bringing in the heavy set, heading to that wing tee. Yeah, so we'll see Wortman under center for the first time tonight. Looks like Semko and Wolf in the backfield. And there's gonna be a little delay there. It looked like most of the offense moved before the ball did. So now is that fourth and one, it is an offensive, excuse me, a false start against the offense. And as that fourth and one becomes fourth and six, Coach Kaiser changes his mind. He's back to a punting formation now. The ball marked at the Braves, 49. Farinato and Verano back deep. Pfeiffer to do the punt. It's a high snap. He does a good job getting it down. It's a nice punt. Farinato waves, or excuse me, that was Verano waves for the fair catch at the 16 yard line. So yes. that's where the Red Tornadoes will take over. 10 09 left in the first quarter. Yeah, Jim, that's a, a good job there by the Red Tornadoes after you know seeing some sets that I, you know, at least watching a little bit of tape. It, that word wasn't the, the normal sense that you see <laughs> out of the Shiklimi Braves. So um, they did a good job of bending but not breaking. You know, they get down to that fourth and one. They don't jump off sides, and then they get the punt. So really good job there defensively at getting a stop. 
Feliciano in the gun. Stellar to his left. Davit and Farinato were in the wing. Now they're going to flip the formation. Double tight for the Red Tornadoes. It's going to be a handoff to Stellar to the left, and he's got the corner. One guy's got a chance to make a play, and he does. Good play there made by number 33, Rashawn Martin for the Braves. And I think they're going to get Stellar with a face mask there, Dan. Yeah, that's a tough one there. It looked like Stellar was trying to trying to get the... Yeah, and, and that's a... It's a real tough call there because it's it's pretty much either if you keep your hand open it's not a face mask if you close your hand it is a face mask and that's that's a, it's a tough one after a really nice run there to get things started. Well, and that and that was a really well designed play like that's I I thought that was going to break bigger than it was. Martin made a great play because he was the only one there. Farinato had sealed the other uh, safety who was coming over to make a play. Yeah, it looked like something they saw there defensively. I'm not sure if that was a call from the sideline or if that was Feliciano's decision, but. Really good decision flipping the field there, flipping the uh, the formation and running to the wide side there. Yeah, because he went from the 16 out to the 29, so it was a gain of about 13. And then they'll walk it off five yards, so it's going to make it a replay first down. It'll be first and what is it going to be? About three. First and three from the 24-yard line. Yeah, so we'll see what... We'll see what happens here. What Coach Dare decides to do if we they go back to the wide side of the field or if they decide to come back short side here. Feliciano sends Stellar in motion. He pitches it to him to the wide side of the field. And again, he's got that corner. He's going to put his foot in the ground. He makes one man miss. He stays on his feet. He's across the 30. He'll pick up the first down and more. We'll see where they mark him down. Looks like at the 31. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good run there by Stellar. Good job. And, and that play... That play always works out pretty well as long as they're running to the boundary because you get out there so deep coming from the shotgun, it, it takes a little bit to develop, but you're able to get out to that sideline and kind of just, when you need three, four yards, that's where you're going to get it. Same look for the Red Tornadoes. Double tights with Chicatano and Schultz. This time it's Farinato in motion and they hand it to him. He tries to break the corner, he does. He runs out of an arm tackle, he puts his head down and run over a defender, but he will get dropped at the 30, 37 yard line. It'll be a pickup of about six, make it second and four. Yeah, Jim, it looks like if these, if these red tornadoes are able to keep getting to the boundary, Rashawn Martin's gonna be busy today. He's been, he's been, you know, he's playing from, coming from that safety spot. Yeah. And that he's kind of that last line of defense there. Um, so if he, he's gonna be a busy guy today if these tornado backs just are able to keep breaking things off. Stellar in motion. Feliciano's going to throw. He's looking. He's in, he's in motion now. Schultz is wide open to left. He delivers a strike. Schultz makes a great catch, makes the initial tackler miss. He's in brave territory down to the 38-yard line. A big pitch and catch there for the Red Tornadoes. 9.02 left, first and 10 in brave territory at the 38. And Jim, we talked about it. We talked about it a lot last week, and we talked about it. I, I just want to bring it up again. Feliciano, again. The, the progress that he has made over these first three weeks is unbelievable. His, his first initial look was Shikitano. He didn't have Shikitano. He decides to roll back across, back from where he was rolling initially, keeps his eyes downfield, and delivers a strike to Schultz. That's a great job. Another shift from the Red Tornadoes here. This time they're going to bounce Schultz out. And Coach Dare didn't like what he saw. He took his first time out of the half. Yeah, so Jim, it looks like this is a, a good drive here to get things started here for the Big Red. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's you had the big return by the Braves to start off, right? Yep. They got almost midfield. They got out to the 30. Excuse me, the 45. Right. Uh, they pick up nine. Luckily for the for the Red Tornadoes, you get the um, the false start there to force the punt. Uh, it's a good punt by Pfeiffer. It is. He it does is. a nice job. Buries him deep. Yep. But, uh, but yeah, you have the couple runs there by Stellar and Farinato, and then the, the big play of the drive thus far is the pitch and catch to Schultz. Yeah, and Jim, I'm, you know, I, like, I like it when Coach Dara proves me right. You know, <laughs> so he decided to throw, maybe throw the ball a little bit more this week. We see a throw early on in the first drive. I like to see that. Well, I think, like we said, I mean, a lot of these, uh, the Red Tornadoes, experience is in the trenches. A lot of these skill players are, are relatively new to this kind of playing time. 
So Coach Dare is kind of with the rest of us where he's finding out what he's got in Feliciano week over week. Yep, yep, you're right. First and 10. Red Tornadoes at the Brave 38, 833 left. In the first quarter, Feliciano's rolling out to his right. He's gonna throw for Schultz. He's got, there's a, that's gonna fall incomplete. So there was a flag early on the play. We'll see what was going on there. Yeah, I thought there was gonna be one later too, but. Well, I, I paused waiting for it. Yeah. Um, and it's illegal motion against the Red Tornado. So that one was kind of doomed before it started. Yeah, it would have been off or not. Uh, but again, good job by, uh, it, I, you're right. We keep talking about Feliciano and how well he does uh, extending the play. He's able to extend that play because of that, of just, gigantic offensive line <laughs> and, and a very experienced offensive line. They do a great job giving him plenty of time to get the ball off and go through his progressions. They'll do the same sort of jump where Schultz pops out and Chicatano flips to the other tight end position. They're gonna pitch it to Steller. He's gonna try to get the corner. The Braves do a good job of getting there initially, but Steller makes the guy miss, lowers his head to finish the run. He'll get across the original line of scrimmage, so he'll get all five back and a couple more for good measure. They're gonna mark him at the 36, which is gonna bring up, what, about a second and six, second and eight, excuse me. Okay, that's a really good job there by Steller. Getting outside of that, that initial defender that kind of got into the backfield and then finishing his run, too. He put his head down and made a nice little hit there to finish the run out. Same look for the Red Tornadoes. They're a little heavy to the right. But now Feliciano won't have anybody in the sidecar. They're going to hand it to Farinato, and he goes right up the middle on that inside trap. He runs through an arm tackle. It does a great job. He'll pick up the first down across the 25 to the 24, where it'll be first and 10 Red Tornadoes. Yeah, that's a good job there by Farinato. Just, just trusting his blockers, getting up behind there and uh, making a nice little run there, getting the first down. That, you know, we talk about this Red Tornado offense, how the, the, their way of being successful is staying on schedule, and they're definitely doing that so far. Stellar to Feliciano's left. It's Davitt and Farinato in the wing to the right. Schultz and Chicatano on the tight end. Now it's Stellar to the right. Puts his foot in the ground and gets up field. Nice play there made by the Braves. I see 24 Wolf in there, uh, but he wasn't the first on site. First on site looked like it was 82 Hoffman. Yeah, it's a good job rallying to the ball there for the Braves. Um, you know, like we said, the Red Tornado's offense has been having a lot of success so far on this drive. If they are able to buckle down and get a stop down here, getting closer to the end zone, it would be big for their momentum. Only a yard on that one, so it'll be second and nine. Uh, Feliciano and company, they look to the sideline to Coach Dara to see exactly what, what they're going to do here. We're just clock ticks under seven minutes in the first quarter, no score. It's Stellar to the right. He's across, he's inside the 20 now, or he's at the 20, it looks like is where they're gonna put him. So it's gonna be third and about five. Yeah, that's a that's another good run there uh, by Stellar. It looked like he had a he had a, a seam and he was able to get up in there, but credit to Sean Martin coming from that safety spot again. I think we're gonna be hearing his name a lot. Did a good job of coming up and filling his gap from that safety spot. It just looks like Stellar to the sideline. 18 Zarski is in there now for the Red Tornadoes. In the backfield, the side, Feliciano. There's a little confusion there in the backfield. And Farinato's dropped for a big loss. He's back to the 27. It's going to be a loss of about seven. Yeah, that's a tough one there. That, con that confusion definitely got Farinato dropped deep in the backfield there. So it's gonna be fourth and 13 now, and this is a weird place, because you're not gonna punt from here. Right. Looks like we're gonna bring in the uh, the receiving package. You see Shikitano coming out, Spears coming in. Uh, Stellar went back out to the sideline. Get the speed guys out there, go four wide here. Yep. As they check their wristbands, that's what it looks like, Dan. You see you got Farinato split to the left. Oh, Spears is gonna be in the wing but Feliciano's by himself, and they're gonna get a little motion there on the Red Tornadoes. He's gonna back it up to the 32 after the five yard penalty. He's gonna make it fourth and 18 now with 526 left in the first quarter of a scoreless ball game here in Sunbury. Yeah, and that's a tough one, Jim. It looked like you had some guys that, uh, you know, maybe weren't, weren't ready to, weren't really in the right spots yeah. in there. 
you, shuffling guys around. You know, Spears is normally uh, the quarterback and, and, and a returner and stuff like that. And they got him in here at the wing back, back spot. So it could have just been a, you know, a couple personnel issues that caused that false start. So Fernando split out wide to the left by himself. Schultz is by himself on the other side. The Braves have a single high safety, so Feliciano's going to read him and make a decision. He's throwing in the direction of Fernando. There's two Braves over there. It's going to be intercepted in the end zone. No, it's incomplete. So the Braves will take over first and 10 at the red at their own 32-yard line. Yeah, and that incompletion for them is, is, is big. I, the, the interception would have been big as well, but they also would have lost uh, about, about 12, yards. 12 yards of field position with the interception. So good to see, good job just knocking that one down. That's, Mount Carmel's in a tough spot there. You know, that fourth fourth and, and long in like a medium field range, you're not, like you said, you're not going to punt there. Right. But not really going to ask Steller to come out and kick a field goal in, in that situation this early in the game. So you go for it. You don't get it. Now you just look at your defense and say, hey, get, get us the ball back, get us a stop. First and 10 for the Braves. Three receivers to the right. We'll say two, I suppose. But the Braves are gonna take their first time out of the first half. You saw Dan before kind of, uh, before they broke the huddle there, Wortman was yelling at the sideline to try to get the personnel he was looking for. Yeah, yeah, so we'll see that that's, you know, so both teams used a timeout already. Looks like for similar reasons, you know, coaches don't like <laughs> something they see. Right. Um, but uh, we'll see if they, hopefully for either side, they don't need them when, when yeah. the, uh, the second quarter rolls around getting late there in the half. Red Tails break their huddle pretty quick. Yeah, when coaches are using timeouts this early, Dan, you you know, you, it makes you want, like, it, it, it's clear how critical they feel each of these plays are in every possession. Yeah, for sure, and, and, and that's one of those things, especially early in the game, high ball game, you just get the turnover. Yeah. You don't want something to, to set you back after just getting the turnover on downs. Yep. So for the Braves now, to the right side, it's Pfeiffer, Hoffman, and Stemko is in kind of a slot. And they're gonna throw it, and he's, Wortman is crushed. The ball's incomplete. So they're looking for a, Dan, that's a pump and go yeah. with Pfeiffer, and, and he was running, he, he had some movement. Yeah, there was an early flag too here, right at the line of scrimmage near Pfeiffer. So we'll see. Yep, false start against the Braves, so that'll take back five to the 27. It'll be first and 15 from there. I'll tell you what, though, Jim. I, you know, that Wortman's a tough kid, but I think he's going to think twice about uh, bringing that motion from that left side and turning his back on it, trying to do any sort of long pass after the hit he took from Schultz there. Yeah, that takes a long time for that to develop. It does, and, and Schultz is, is on that inside receiver. As he motions through, he's got he's got the green light then after that to go after the quarterback, and he's coming at full speed. This time it's Pfeiffer and Morgan to the right. Stemko in there on the wing. It's, Wormann's gonna take the snap and go to his right. He's gonna sling it out there to Pfeiffer. It's a great throw, it's incomplete. Oh, it is it's completed. It's caught, okay. Um, so it'll be a completed pass out to the 30, what are they gonna mark it? <laughs> the 38 yard line, so it'll bring up second and five. All right, and uh, yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll see what the Tornadoes decide to do here defensively in second and second and medium range. See if they, or see what the Braves are gonna bring out here too. You know, I, I was really expecting to see more of that, that wing tee. Yeah, it's Pfeiffer Morgan to the left. Stemko's in that, that wing back again. Wortman, this time they're going to hand it up the middle. That's number two, Isaac Schaefer Knights. And he'll get to the 40. Red Trails do a good job there staying home. It's going to be third in about two with four minutes left in the first quarter. Yeah, now we'll see, Jim, if they decide. Uh, and here they're going to the same set again here. They bring out, they, they bring out Morgan, bring in Wolf, a little bit more beef. And... Uh, the Red Looks Tornadoes like, do the same. Yeah, yeah, bringing out Schultz and bringing in Kier. Kier had a big week last week, 10 tackles. Huge week. See if he can do it again here. The Braves come out in a more of a tight formation than we've seen. They send Wolf in motion. They're going to hand it. 
And it's stopped in the back and it's stuffed. They're trying to get that out with Stemko, but he had nowhere to go. He ends up losing two. It's going to be fourth and five. Yeah, and, and we said it as soon as Kier got in there. He's, he's a playmaker, Jim. He's a, he's a difference maker. And uh, he definitely showed it right there. Busted through there and did not give any ground. And so Pfeiffer on to punt for the second time tonight. It's a high snap. He doesn't, I don't know how he got any on it. He's going to try to run now. It's a broken play. The ball's out. We'll see how who recovered it, it doesn't much matter because regardless, it's gonna be first and 10 Red Tornadoes at the Brave 39 yard line. Yeah, that's a tough one, Jim. And, and, and you know, I didn't notice it last punt, but this punt, uh, I took notice. Last week against Loyal Sock, uh, the Braves punted the ball, sort of like uh, Hughesville did. And you remember, Coach Darris sent a lot of pressure yeah. after those punts. They're coming out in a different punt formation, so a little bit of a little bit of gamesmanship on both sides of the ball there, switching up their punt package. So we're a little over nine minutes into this one. Uh, defensive struggle thus far, you might call. We got three punts already, but the Red Tomatoes back at it here. It's going to be stellar up the middle, and a great play made there by number 57, Curtis Raker. Curtis Raker, five tackles last week. He's got 11 on the season. He's going to drop Stellar for a loss of a yard. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good play there by Raker. And it, it's a tough tough run there, tough sled in there by Stellar uh, up the middle. I think that uh, Coach Darry is going to need to continue working the uh, the outside of the field because you see with that tight package how tight Shikalimi's defense is. Second and 11. The Red Tornadoes are going to split here. Shikitano and Schultz from the tight end position. They'll split out wide. They're going to hand it to Farron Otto on the, on the end of round. He's got to make a decision here. He does a nice job getting up in inside of the corner. He'll get to the 33-yard line. It's going to bring up third and four. Yeah, that's a, that's a good job there by Verano. Um, and that's it. That's tough. He's he's wait he's waiting on uh, Shimko to get out there in front of him, but I mean, Shimko's a big kid. Shimko's a big kid to get moving, so he had to make the first guy miss. Shimko was able to get on the second guy and gave him a little bit of room there to pick up, get a nice gain. Well, in this brave defense, Dan, so far it just seems like I know the Red Tornadoes are poking at the sides, but they do a really good job of moving laterally. Yeah, they do. Feliciano's going to keep it himself up the middle. He's going to get the first down. He'll get to the 25. So good job there picking up the first down and, and keeping the drive moving. But again, Feliciano, Danny, at 100 yards and two touchdowns last week. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a really good job there by Feliciano. I think that was his, his first carry of the game, so, too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, but we talk about it all the time. Coach Darrett does a really good job of scheming that. He'll, he'll kind of lull you to sleep with, with Stellar and Farinato and Verano and Davitt, and then he'll hit you with Feliciano when you're not ready for it. 55 seconds left in the first quarter. Feliciano's gonna pitch it to Stellar. Stellar's trying to get to the outside, and again, there's a the flags all over the place there. We'll see exactly what happens. It's a good run by Stellar to get outside and get up field. He's, we'll see where they mark him out of bounds. They mark him out of bounds about a yard short of the first down, but I think this is gonna be on the red trails. Yep, it's a hold, so it's gonna come back anyway. Well, that's a that's a good there, good run there by Stellar. It looked like so had some good blocking out in front of him, but he said they got him for the hold there, so negated. One step forward and two steps back here for both both offenses so far tonight, Dan. Yeah, it, it definitely has been a a, a kind of sloppy start to this yeah. game. So the ball's going to come back to the 35. So it's going to be first and 20. Uh, for the Red Tornadoes. Again, 46 seconds left here in the first quarter. It's nothing, nothing. Uh, scoreless first quarter here at Chickalimi Stadium. Feliciano's in the gun. The Red Tornadoes are going to keep that formation with Schultz and Chicatano split out. Feliciano's going to throw. He goes straight back. He rolls to his left. He's under pressure. Now he's going to run. He escapes the pocket. He puts his head down and cuts back upfield. He'll get around the 30 yard line. 
Uh, we'll see. They're going to give him the. Th they're going to say he's at the 29 about. So he'll get six of those 10 back. It's going to be second and 14. Yeah, and that's tough for Feliciano there because he see he sees that green at the wide side of the field. But you talked about how well this Braves defense runs laterally. Pedro is not a slow kid. He's very he's very fast. He's able to get out there and get some yards. But he ran a long way yeah. just to get back to the line of scrimmage, and then did a nice job getting what he could. Let's see if the Red Tornadoes try to run a play or not. They don't have to. And they won't, they won't get it off. So whether it was intentional or not, the last play of the half, or the quarter, excuse me, is that run by Feliciano. So after one here at Shikolumi Stadium, we're scoreless. Yeah, that's a, it really, this is a good sign for Shikolumi, Jim. Uh, you know, coming out and getting a couple stops here, a couple turnovers, being able to hold Mount Carmel scoreless with how much success this offense had last yeah. week, put the ball in the end zone, you know, on multiple occasions against the Spartans in Hughesville. Being able to blank them in the first quarter and, and you know, hold them tough. You got them in a, in a second and long here. You got, you got a chance to really, really kind of get the ball back for your offense and hopefully get something going. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. I mean, you're you're right, Dan. I think it's it's been interesting uh, to watch, and you know, whether it's Wednesday night or you're at home uh, on YouTube watching right now, you know, just a friendly reminder that the sights and sounds of tonight's game are coming to you live, uh, thanks to the generosity of the Red Trail community, near and far. So as the Mount Carmel Area School District and its partners continue to do big things, just remember no donation is too small. Be sure to listen throughout the broadcast each week for ways to support our efforts or call 570-339-1500 for more information. And the way you support that could be just helping out the partners. Community Pharmacy, uh, Service Electric has always been a great partner. There's so many more. Academy Sports, Archie Shoes. Hollywood Pizza and Bakery, right? We talked about we had some Hollywood last couple weeks. I think yep. uh, Hollywood and Chicatanos and Colt have been taking over the Supper Club on Thursday nights, which we'll talk about a little bit later here, Dan. Yeah, and I've heard they've been doing a bang up job of it too. But as it stands, when we start the second quarter, it's second and 15 for the Red Trails from the 29. Feliciano's going to throw again, and he's got a couple of receivers open. He's got Schultz open, but he threw it behind him. It's picked off by number 33, Rashawn Martin again who's been all around the ball all night. It's gonna be first and 10 Braves from the, we'll see where they mark, it looks like the eight yard line. Yeah, Jim, that's a tough That's a tough one for Feliciano there. He had, Schultz had a step, and it looks like Verano had a step. It looked like they were both running flags to the corner, and just threw it a little bit behind him. He had, he had a second to set his feet, decided to throw it on the run, and just took a, a little bit off of it because of that. So we'll see. He's out there on defense. I'm gonna see him trying to go after the ball and try and get it back for himself. So the Braves come out, they'll have two receivers to the left. It's gonna be Morgan and Schaefer Knights. Two receivers to the right and Pfeiffer. But this time they're gonna hand it off on the inside to Knights. Schaefer Knights, he does a good job getting across the 10 out near the 15. We'll mark him at the... Trying to see this, they're on the far side from us right now. I think they're going to give him the 12, so it'll be a pickup of about four. Yeah, second that's what and it looks six. Like there. But yeah, that's a that's a a good, well-designed play there. Tough run by Neitz too, Schaefer Neitz. Braves back out. Now they'll have the twins and the wing back to the right. Two receivers left. This is a wide open look, Dan. Five wide. Wortman's by himself. He's going to throw. And he's going to throw it to Hoffman, who's just running a fly. Farinato's in position, and he's not able to make the interception, but he does a good job knocking the ball away. So great defense there by number four, Michael Farinato. Yeah, I think I think that uh, Wortman actually had maybe took one extra step or something like that, held onto the ball just a little bit too long with the speed of those receivers on the outside. He's, he needs to get that two steps and get it out there, get it out in front of him because with the size, they can go up and, and win a jump ball. Yeah, and, and I mean, what I like about this, what's been interesting is is the Braves are showing a willingness to try to take the top off this red tornado defense early. Yeah, so we'll see if that's a that's a scheme thing, you know, maybe gonna tighten things up and decide to run, run heavy in the second half. Now we're gonna get a flag here. I'm not sure. 
the flag is. It's a false start against the Braves. I'm not really sure what happened there. If we're being honest, it looked like it didn't look like anybody was set before they threw the flag. Even no, I'd have to agree with you. But once you do get set, as soon as one guy's set, that's usually the the one that does it. So that's going to take them back behind the sticks. It's going to be third and eleven from the seven yard line now. 11:04 left in the second quarter. Nothing, nothing here in Sunbury. Wortman's in the shotgun. He's got Schaefer Knights to his left. He's going to throw again. He's going to now. He's going to roll. He's under pressure. David's going to drop him in the backfield near the goal line. It's going to be all the way back to the one. So dangerous situation down there for the Braves, but a huge play by David to not let Wortman get the corner. And yeah, we talked about the Braves' lateral quickness on on defense. There's that Red Tornado's lateral quickness right there. David coming from that inside linebacker spot, able to get to get to Wortman as he's scrambling and make a huge play. And it looks like we're going to go after this punt here, Jim. Yeah, given where the snaps have been on the last two, um, not a whole lot of room for error back there in Pfeiffer. It is a good snap. He does a good. There's a flag on the play already. Um, it's going to be a low punt. Verano, excuse me, that Spears picks it up and he's down the left side. Who takes a big stick from Gage Wolf? But we'll see what the flag is. As the play stands right now, it's first and ten. Red Tornadoes at the 15. Yeah, and that's that's a big one. The flag was immediate, so I think I'm thinking it was a legal formation. It was or a legal procedure there. Yep, it was immediately as the ball was snapped. Yep, that's exactly what it was. So we'll see how this plays out. I'm wondering if, because it's not a dead, it's not a dead ball foul because they right. didn't stop the play. So I'm wondering if Coach Dara just decides to decline this and take it at the 15. Well, yeah. take the or, plus the five. Well, that's do they get the? Is that how it's going to yeah, work? Yes, so that's how this is going to work. Okay. It's going to be, so Red Tornado is going to accept the penalty tacked on the end of the return. Yeah. So it's in a game where points seem like they may be at a premium. The Red Tornadoes are going to start the first drive in the second quarter. First and 10 from the 10. Excuse me, first and goal it's going to be. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. First and yeah, goal they drop, right away. Looking, they drop the sticks. So the Red Tornadoes will stay tight. Feliciano's going to hand it off to Farinato, and Farinato's got the open field. He's going to go in untouched from 10 yards out. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Yeah, that's a that's a, that's a a big momentum shift there for the Big Red. You know, they, they get the sack by, and it started with the sack by Davit. Yep. Davit gets the sack, which pins uh, the Braves deep. They're, they kind of have a little issue with the procedure penalty there, getting lined up because they're expecting some rush. And it was just, it, it, it all kind of gelled together. It all kind of meshed together really, really well there. Yep, and you have, and that's the whole thing, right? When you're usually snapping that ball, you're snapping on a punt as Stellar comes on for the extra point. That's usually like about 15 yards, right? From I think it's thir 13, 13 yards. Yep. Stellar's kick is up, and it is good. So 7 nothing Red Tornadoes, but like we were saying, yeah, so you're usually snapping that 13. The ball was at the 1. Yeah. So... Even if Pfeiffer's got his foot all the way to the back of the end zone, you got 11 yards. So you're already two yards short. So he knew that he was under pressure to get the ball out in the first place. So you get the motion, you get the quick kick. Spears does a great job of fielding an off a of bounce on the run. Yeah. And, and made a, got a nice return out of yeah. it too. And you blink and it's seven nothing Red Tornadoes. Yeah, and that's a, and that's a that's a tough break for the Braves there, but that's a that's big for the Tornadoes now. Granted, they not a lot of time. That defense didn't have a whole lot of time on the sidelines. That's true too. Coming right back out here, but I think they're going to be a little bit more energized now coming out with a with a lead to protect. Well, and, and I know we were talking about it before, but this isn't. You haven't seen the end of Wortman taking a two or three step drop and slinging it. Oh, absolutely to Pfeiffer not. Or or Hoffman on a fly. Especially on a, just I, a go I, route. Especially I think if they get down there clo close to the end zone, you know, with it within within the red zone. That's that's a place to do it, you know. I mean, you take advantage of those big guys. You throw them a jump ball in the end zone. Looks like Yagodinsky's going to kick off for the Red Tornadoes this time. For the Braves, it's going to be Pfeiffer and Chase Morgan back deep again. Yeah. 
high kick out of Yaginski. Nice kick. It's going to be Pfeiffer at the 16. And he tries to figure out his lane. He picks his way. He does a good job getting up inside that Red Trail coverage team. He'll get out to the 38 yard line where it'll be first and 10 Braves. Yeah, yeah, that's a good job there by uh, Pfeiffer to, to get anything out of that and, and get him. Give him some pretty decent starting field position here. So now we just got to see this Braves offense be able, be able to do something with the good field position because they've had it throughout this game. Yeah, it's actually going to be the 39. They walked it up a yard, which is really where I thought he went down in the first place. Right, right. But they were standing at the 38. Exactly 10 minutes left in the first half. 7 nothing Red Tornadoes here at Shikolimi Stadium. The Braves come out with a heavy set to the right. They're going to hand it to Schaefer Knights. He's going to try to bounce to the outside. He can't get there. There's three red tornadoes ready to knock him out of bounds after a gain of only a yard. And that's a good job there defensively, not giving up that, that outside edge. They, you know, the, the corner and the defensive end looked like Schultz and Spears over on this side. Did a really good job of coming up, keeping contained, and Schaefer Knights had nowhere to go. Fortman gets the call from the sideline. He brings it in to the troops. It's twins left with a wing back to the left, a tight end to the right. And Wortman has Knights, Schaefer Knights as a sidecar. He throws it. He's looking for Hoffman. But he's under pressure immediately from Zarski. He'll fall incomplete third and nine. Yeah, it looked like Zarski. Zarski coming from a, a either a safety or a corner spot there. I think he's in there at safety with. Uh, or maybe. I think he's no, the he's, DN Yeah, on you're that right. Side. He is coming from that defensive end. And he came in there untouched. And uh, if Wortman would have hung on to that for a fraction of a second more, he would have taken a shot from Zarski. Now it's Pfeiffer and Morgan to the right. It looks like Stemko in the wing. Portman's going to take the snap, but he's going to roll that way. He's going to look for Pfeiffer on a hard comeback. It's a good throw and catch. Beautiful play for the first down on third and long. It's a it's a nice comeback. The ball was delivered on time and on target. And it's first and ten Braves. Yeah, Jim. It seems it seems like he he goes to Pfeiffer a lot, and you know we talked about it's uh, Pfeiffer and, and Hoffman are, are definitely his his number one targets. And it seems like they, they have a good chemistry. That their the timing on that was was impeccable. First and ten from the 49 now inside Red Tornado territory. Pfeiffer's by himself to the left. They get along to Wortman's left. Excuse me. A little shift here from the Braves. And Coach Kaiser didn't like that. He's going to take his second time out of the half. 8.36 left here in the second quarter. Red Tornadoes on top, 7-0. The Braves facing a first and 10, Braves with a first and 10 from Mount Carmel's 49. Yeah, so we'll see here. This is a, this is a big drive here for the Braves. You know, got to try and put something back up on the board or at least burn enough clock that you go into a half only down one score. You know, if you're not going to be able to get any points up, you got to go down in the half. You can't go down more than, more than the score. Yeah, it's been an interesting half so far. Like we said, uh, defensive struggle for sure. I'd be curious uh, to see. You know, we see our buddy Jose over there uh, tallying our stats. I'd be curious to see if we can get those at the half and see really, really where we are. Because again, the Red Tornadoes are on top seven nothing. So you figure, all right, well they had at least one uh, really long drive, right? Nope. 10 yards, <laughs> right? one yeah. play, 10 yards, seven points. It's pretty good for efficiency's sake, but as you called out, Dan, not great if you're trying to give your defense a blow. Right, right, but but again, you know, one one play, 10 yards, one touchdown, that's a that's a good, uh, pretty pretty good drive there. I, I wouldn't mind seeing a couple more of those. Wortman under center now with Stemko and Schaefer Knights in the backfield. It's gonna be a pitch to the short side and the Red Tornadoes are ready for that. That's going to be a gain of maybe two yards. It's going to be second and eight, but that's a great play by, I'm trying to see Dan, was that, Kier was on the tackle, but was, was it Spears? I, I, I didn't get a good look. The defender for the Red Tornadoes did a great job of setting the edge and sending Schaefer Knights back inside. Um, it, was either, it was either Spears at that corner spot, or that's Liam Bradley over here at this other defensive end spot. But Dalton Moser in there at that D tackle spot, they do a good job too of getting upfield and turning guys back in too. So it could have been anybody on this side. 
Portman under center again. This time Knights comes in motion. They hand it to Semko up the middle, and the Red Tornadoes blow that up from the inside out. It's going to be another yard, maybe, for Stemco. It's going to bring up third and a long seven from the 47-yard line. Yeah, Jim, you know, I, I talked about in the pregame about uh, Coach Kaiser kind of going to the old bread and butter this wing tee, but it looks like that is what the Tornadoes have been preparing for yeah. all week because they've had an answer. Anytime they go with this, this tight run game, they've had an answer. Now the Red Tornadoes make some changes there thinking the Braves are going to throw. And looks like they are. Back to four wide. Portman directing Schaefer Knights behind him. He's going to drop straight back at Chicatano. And it passes intercepted. The screen passes intercepted. Now it's fumbled. And it's scooped by Steller. And Steller's going to take it in for a Red Tornado touchdown. So we've got to talk about this. As it stands, it's 13-0 Red Tornadoes with 7-0-1 left. The Braves did a terrific job. They had a screen set up, but number 58, Kellen Geary, was standing there. He picks off the pass. He's tackled, the ball pops out, and Julian Steller, Johnny on the spot as he's been his whole career of Hal Carmel, <laughs> scoops it up and scores for the Red Tornadoes. You're absolutely right about Julian Steller being Johnny on the spot there. Kellen Geary doesn't get his doesn't get too many opportunities to carry the ball. So he gets he gets hit there. Workman punches that ball out. And like you said, that hopped right into the waiting hands of Steller, who was already at full speed, right. and he waltzed right into the end zone. That's a huge play for the Red Tornadoes, and a, and a it could be a dagger for the Braves. It's a good snap and a good hold. Steller's kick is up, and that one's good. So now we talked about how efficient the Red Tornadoes were one play 10 yards before, and now that um, that, that turn of events there, Dan, uh, that's another quick score for the Red Tornadoes. Yeah, yeah, it is, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a big play there. What have we been doing this, about three years now? That's one of the crazier plays I've seen. Yeah, yeah Not I'd that say we so. haven't seen defensive touchdowns, but just. Yeah, you always, you always see some here and there, and, and you know, special teams, you know, kick returns and stuff like that, but that's, uh, you know, three different people handling the ball. To, right. for, for a defensive touchdown. Yeah. You know, it goes quarter, quarterback, D lineman, linebacker, <laughs> touchdown. It's, it's, it's definitely a, one of the more interesting ways. If, if, it was, if this was baseball, it would be one of those ones that's real interesting to score. Right. You know, 1-1-3 one, one, or something like that. Yep. So Jagodinski, he'll kick off for the Red Tornadoes again. Uh, so Steller. Seller's got two extra points now and a touchdown. So he's got eight out of the Red Tornadoes, 14 points tonight. He's climbing up the list of all-time scorers here at Mount Carmel. Yes, he is. That is, that is very true. He's he's not very far behind. Uh, it's uh, Mangiapane and Sinkovic are the only two ahead of him. Nagadinsky's kick is down. This one's a little shorter. It's going to bounce in front of Piper, and it's going to die. So actually, Morgan's going to pick it up. And he does a good job returning, and he gets inside. The Red Tornado's going to drop him at the 42-yard line. And I'll tell you what, Jim, Al, Al Bailey there, number 28, making a, a very good play. He, he wasn't able to get Morgan initially, but slowed him up enough to not let him hit that seam at full speed, and then he was able to bring him down on the tackle. So good job there by Bailey on the special teams play. It's actually going to be the 43, so 6.55 left in the first half. 14-0 Red Tornadoes. First and 10 Braves at their own 43. Wortman under center. Two backs behind him. They're going to hand it to Stemko off the right side, and the Red Tornadoes are there. They do a good job bottling that up for a gain of... We'll try to get a look. Game of about four, second and six. Jim, that's that old school wing tee, uh, like, fear play there. Yeah. And, and he did a good job getting something out of it. You see for the Red Tornadoes, number 71, Nick Nestico is going to hobble off the field. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as the night goes on. Nestico, one of many Red Tornadoes who goes both ways. Yeah. We got a false start there by the Braves. And that, that looked like you saw uh, anybody watching the game last night. I think early on there was a false start called on the entire Dallas offensive line. Yeah, and yeah. That, false start on everybody except for the center. Right. <laughs> and, and that's kind of what, what happened there. 
Uh, so it'll go from second and eight to about second and 13. Yeah, so right after that, that decent little run there, moves it right back. That's yep. tough. Ortman's going to throw. It's a little pop pass, and Farrell does a good job sticking Hoffman. He comes down with it. But it is going to be third and seven from the 46 now for the Braves. Yeah, I was going to say, Jim, it looks like they got just the pretty much the uh, the penalty yardage back yeah. on that one. Yep. But yeah, that was a good job by Farinato coming from that safety spot. And delivering a hit there on, on the, the much bigger Hoffman. So it looks like Wolf and Stemko are going to come out for the Braves. So you, again, Dan, you think this looks like more of a pass package? Yeah, because you got you even have uh, you Morgan, Rashawn Martin in yeah. there too. Morgan and Martin are get in there. The They're speed the in there. Morgan's going to come in motion. They're going to hand it to him. He's going to try to get that get up inside. He does a great job in and out. Cole Spears is going to stop him, but not before he got the first down. So big run there by by Chase Morgan to pick up that first down in a big spot for the Braves. Yeah, yeah, that's that was a, a, a huge play. And again, you know, Jim, we talked about it. this. It's still very early in this game, but if you're Shiklimi, you've got to get some points here in yeah. this first half. You know, take it in with only down one score. You go in down 14 points, it's a lot harder to come out of the break, especially knowing that the Red Tornado offense is going to be getting the ball back in the second half, too. Yep. Spears, in the course of that tackle, he got uh, kind of his helmet knocked off, so we'll have to head over to the sideline for a play. Number 10, Xavier Diaz, is going to come in and spell him for the time being. What was, it? what was the penalty, Jim? There, so that's actually... Looks like we missed it. I got caught they're up gonna here. They're going to bring that all the way back. That's going to be the face mask against the Braves. They got stellar in the first half or first quarter for the Red Tornadoes. Okay. And they're actually going to get Morgan for the Braves. So that one's going to come all the way back. So instead of first and 10, it's going to be third and 13. And Wortman's under pressure immediately. And he goes down. It's Davin and Schultz. Davin once again comes up with a huge sack on third down. Yeah, and, that's going to cause a punt for the Braves. And coming from that inside linebacker spot, it looked like he blitzed from the inside, coming through through one of those those inside A gap, B gap blitzes there. And that's those are the toughest ones for a quarterback. You, you know, usually you're you're up waiting for the pressure coming from the outside, and you're able to step up into the pocket. When you have pressure coming from the outside and from the inside, there's nowhere for you to go. So Schultz and Davitt combine it for that sack, but Davitt. Do it, doing the work there. Pfeiffer on the punt for the fourth time tonight. It's a high snap. He does a good job getting it. It's a great punt. Spear, it's going to bounce in front of Spears. We'll see if he tries to field it. They're just going to get away from it now. They'll take a red tornado bounce back towards the 30. They'll down it at the 27-yard line. It'll be first and 10 red tornadoes from their own 27-yard line. They lead the Shiklomi Braves. 14 nothing here with 3.56 left in the first half. Yeah, so at this point, Jim, I think this is where Coach Derek kind of opens things up. You got just under four minutes left, and you're up two scores. You really want to extend that lead going into the yeah. half. You, you know what I mean? You want, you want to get at least yeah. one more up on the board. And if you can get one quick, you want to try and get two. So let's, we'll see what Coach Derek decides to do here if we decide to go throw the ball a little bit or, or a little more tempo. Well, they'll come out tight. Zarski's going to be back in there. They're going to fake the pitch to him and give it to Verano. And Verano's in the open field. He's down the left side. He's in the Braves territory. He makes one man miss, and he'll sneak out of bounds there. And we're going to get a flag for a late hit. Yep. So as it stands, the play is going to stop around the Braves 39-yard line. And I think we're going to add 15 onto that one, Dan. I think so, Jim. Yeah, that, that looked like it was uh, Verano kind of gave himself up, stepped out of bounds there, and then it... it, it and that's one of those tough ones too. It did not look intentional. It no, didn't look like they no. tried. He tried to really, really get after it and, and hit him hard, but just wasn't able to stop himself. Yep. So we'll add 15 onto that. So you know we talked about how. Uh, <laughs> It's all right. So I guess maybe, maybe we're gonna, I thought that maybe we we're going to throw the ball to get one quick, but we yeah, right. didn't have to. We're, we're, we're moving the ball real quick right now. So maybe the penalty there, Dan, could, based on where they stopped that ball, it's at the 27-yard line. Uh, that's about three yards earlier than I thought. So Verano was likely out of bounds more earlier than we could tell from our side. As Feliciano takes it up the field, he'll get down to the 20. Yeah, that would make sense, Jim. 
because uh, that is that is you know that's the far side of the field. It's not the easiest to see where, where they're stepping out of bounds over there. So, um, but we knew he was out of bounds. That was pretty much the only thing. But uh, good run there by Pedro, getting up in there, just you know getting what he can. I, I think it's it's they're starting to wear down this Braves defense. Verano again, the same play that broke big. He bounces to the outside. He gets tripped up. See where they mark him again. It's a little hard to see from that far side. They're not giving him the first down. It's going to be third and about an inch from the 17-yard line. Yeah, and he had that seam again there. Good job. I'm, I, I didn't get to see who it was on the Braves defense. Just getting a, a shoestring on him and tripping him up. 250 and counting here in the first half. Red Tornado's already up 14-0. Driving for a third score. It's a high snap. Feliciano does a good job bringing it down, but it throws the timing off. A huge play there made by Gage Wolf to drop Stellar in the backfield. He's going to lose about four yards. It's going to go to fourth and five for the Red Tornadoes. And Jim, I would just, I would venture a guess, just venture a guess that Gage Wolf's a wrestler. Does that look like he, <laughs> it he like a good looked, like a, looked like a, a good little, little single leg there he, he went after him with? Um, but it was, it was a good play, kind of kind of blown up from the beginning. A little high snap from Feliciano, got him spun around and took too long to develop there. It was a tough one. It's a big play here for the Braves. Yeah. Have another opportunity to turn the Red Tornadoes away. The Feliciano's gonna hand it to Verano on the inside and Verano's not gonna get it. The seam wasn't there, he tried to go back and the Braves were sliding in wait. So they're gonna stop him early. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one there, Jim, because uh, you know you, you run that play twice on that drive already. That's usually one of those plays where kind of Coach Darrell will lull you to sleep a little bit. So they were prepared for it. You know, they they saw it broke big, and I'm assuming that's why Coach Darrell decided to go with it. It broke big earlier. We can get that seam again for yeah. four or five yards, but the Braves had the the defense dialed up to defend it. And Huge did play a really by good the Braves. Job. Yep, huge play by the Braves. They're gonna open things up too. They, they're trying, they gotta get some points here. Well again, you got Pfeiffer by himself to the left, Hoffman by himself to the right. You're gonna bring Morgan in motion. Hand. This is the play that was successful last time, but the Red Tornadoes are ready for that one. It looked like Morgan slipped, went down pretty quickly after a pickup of only a yard. Yeah, there was a ton of white jerseys there waiting at the boundary, just trying to set the edge there. So I don't think it was going to get anywhere anyways, Jim. No, the Red Tornadoes called the timeout there. That's their second of the half. So we'll see a minute 43 left in the second quarter. It looks like he'll have gotten two on that play. So it's going to be second and eight for the Braves from their own 25. They trail 14 nothing here at Chickalimi Stadium. And yeah, that's an interesting decision there by, by so Coach too, Dara. Yeah. But, but at the same time, Jim, maybe, maybe he didn't see something or saw something he didn't like. He had the wrong package out there defensively. If if they are gonna open it up and try to run and throw, get the speed guys out there, you wanna make sure you have your speed package in. Yeah, well, So sometimes you'll you'll give them that, that stop of the clock to, to have the right defense out there. Where it gets tricky with all this stuff, and again, when you have guys like Hoffman and Pfeiffer on the Brave side who are both, you know, 6'3", uh, and, and can move and are athletic, this, the defense, the Red Tornadoes run, I mean, of course, and, and anywhere in high school, you yeah. don't necessarily have like nickel packages all the time where you're always practicing with that stuff. So you'll see the Red Tornadoes will bring some of their some of their guys out. So you'll have, you know, Farinato will be on Spears' side and he'll kind of cover over the top. And Verano will do the same on the other side for Feliciano, but... Yeah, it, it looks like they, they move Chicatano into a D tackle spot from his normal defensive end spot in this speed, speed defense. So it'll be Morgan in motion again. This time they're going to hand it to Demko. I think that was. It was hard to tell up there, but he doesn't doesn't have anywhere to go. It's going to be third and eight. Excuse me, that was Schaefer Knights. Yeah, and that was a, that was a good job. Tank, Kier, and Chikatano, the all three of the defensive linemen in there on that tackle, did a really nice job of just kind of bottling that up and not giving Schaefer Knights anywhere to go. So no timeout here from either side. Again, both teams only have one left and. At this point, third and eight, deep in your own territory, both sides may just be content to let this go to half. I think so. It, it, unless, unless they get a first down here or Malcolm gets a big stop here, then you might see that timeout used. 
but the Braves are open. It's a high snap over Warman Center. He does a great job. All he can do is fall on it, and now you see Coach Darren chasing down the official to call a timeout. <laughs> and that's that's that was the situation there, Jim. You get a big big play. So now we've seen we've seen the high snaps snaps to Pfeiffer. We've seen the you know. It, Granted, he was backed up there in the end zone, sure. but it, not, not a so great punt. We've seen decent returns on some of these punts from the Red Tornadoes, so now it's like, okay, it's a fourth down, fourth and long. Right. And, I, and we got 55 seconds left. Let's see if we can we can get another one up. Yeah, it's, it's listed at fourth and 20 from about the 11, I think. Maybe the, maybe the 12. Now, I wonder if they're gonna send some pressure after this, Jim. Trying to see exactly. Usually, if they send two ba returners back, they're going to set up a return. If they only put one back, they're going to go after it. And it looks like Spears is staying up close. Yep, it's only Farinato back there, which would make sense. Again, I think on both sides, right? If you're if you're the Braves, you got if you get a clean snap and a clean punt, yeah. then it's this is what we go into the half with, right? right? I don't expect the Red Trails to do too much with no timeouts left, and if they have you know 40, 50 yards to go, Braves got to go max protect here. It's a good snap to Pfeiffer. It's a good punt. It's going to get over Farinato's head. He'll take it on a hop. He'll make the first guy miss. He's back into Oh, and he slides down right at midfield. So, again, we'll, we'll see what Coach Zara does here. But with 46 seconds left on the clock and the ball at midfield and no timeouts remaining, I wouldn't expect too much aggression from the Red Tornadoes. I don't know. You're right. I wouldn't expect it, but I'd like to see it. I'd like to see <laughs> Coach Dara come out four wide and, and throw the ball around. Let's see that two-minute drill offense. Well, here you know, comes Let Spears. Pedro throw the ball to the sideline and stuff like that. I would really like to see that. Well, Spears is out there, so you never know. This is a, a passing set. Feliciano's going to put it up. He's rolling to his right. It's those double flags they like to run. He throws a strike, and it's intercepted by Piper down the sideline, and that's the danger there. So now the Braves are in business here. Piper does a great job reading that route the whole way. Yeah. He's going to get into Red Tornado territory. We'll see they mark him down at the 30... 630, about the 37 yard line. So with 36 seconds left, the Braves do have have one timeout. And Dan, we talked about it before. They have two big, fast receivers. Yeah, they do. But uh, the, the the downside for the Braves, Pfeiffer, after making the interception, got a little little hobbled. He's sitting there on the bench. So that's that's. I mean, it's it's, it's big for the Tornadoes' defensive backs because that's one dangerous guy sitting on the bench right there. And I think that might be. Why Coach Kaiser, did he take his time out? Or are they just... No, nope, the clock, play clock's running. We're down under seven now. Okay, okay. They're set. Here comes... It's a, it's a tough snap, and it's going to go to Schaefer Knights, and he tries to get to the outside. It's going to be driven down. Did he get out of bounds? No, nope, he did not. He's inbounds. So the clock is going to continue to run. Coach Kaiser still cool. trying to get everything situated here. They're going to clock Spike. it, it looks yep. like. They will. So it's going to wind up being third. Third at about six, but that's not nearly as important as the 15 seconds remaining on the clock and the ball resting at the Red Tornado 34-yard line. Yeah, Jim, I'm not entirely sure if you saw what uh, what I saw on that initial set when the, the, there was a, the, the fumbled snap, but they had Hoffman way all by himself, way down by the sideline. I think they were going to go his way, try and get him singled up, single cover. So I hope Coach Dara, I, I would assume Coach Dara is going to have somebody shadowing, and, and he's got a safety over the top help there. And it's another difficult snap. Now there's a flag on the play already. Wortman is trying to roll out. He gets up field. He's going to lose a lot here. Now there's a flag on the play, so the clock is going to stop. Otherwise, that would have been the last play of the half. Yeah. But we'll see well, Co that flag. Well, Coach Kaiser does still have his timeout. That flag happened early. So we'll see, to your point, we'll see if it's if it's against the Braves. Coach Kaiser will have the option to use that timeout to stop the runoff. Legal it is shift. against the Braves. The Decline. Red Tornadoes will decline it. And I think that's what Coach Dara is doing. He's gonna let it, they're going to run that clock then. The clock is going to run. And Coach Kaiser... 
calls his last time out of the half with one second left on the clock. So, what's the, so you've what's seen, the move here, Jim? I what think, do you think by Coach Kaiser? Well, I think number one, I think Coach Kaiser's seen enough um, from the, some of the snaps. Yeah. He doesn't want two plays. Right. Right. So we don't want to run the chance that you give the Red Tornadoes the ball back. And then they so, get a right, chance so, to put one in. So this is it. Pfeiffer, uh, again, there was a lot of excitement that happened before. Pfeiffer got off the, up off the bench. So he was kind of walking that, around. Yes. He's part of the huddle now again. Um, so, again, I think, I know we talked about this last week at Hughesville where you always, I always have that question like, when does the head coach decide it's a good time to show, you know, your trick play? Uh, yeah. I, we'll see what happens. Again, Hoffman, Pfeiffer, we, we've seen Wortman can throw it. Like yeah. He's been able to, to sling it out there. You have to get him a second. Uh, but again, with, with Chikitano and Kier, those red tornadoes are really coming after him. Yeah, they, they are, and, and that's the thing. You can, he has to have time to be able to get the ball out to them. So you got Pfeiffer and Hoffman to the right. Chase Young's out there, too. This is where you wonder, like, is it a, a hitch and go or a, a hook, hook and ladder? ladder yeah. right? They're going to run a screen to the opposite side of the field. Schaefer Knights does a good job breaking tackles, but the red tornadoes are going to stop it. And so the clock will run out on that play. And that is the thing. Kellen Geary was the initial guy on the play there yep, who so got shook initially, and then he was able to come back and make a good tackle. Yep, nice so, that's, so that's the end of the first half here at Chickalemi Stadium. It's 14-0 Red Tornadoes. We'll be back in just a few with stats in, in the second half. Don't go anywhere.
Hello and welcome back to Shikolami Stadium in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, where the Red Tornadoes are on top of the Braves, 14-0 at the end of one half. Now, thank you, thanks to our good friend Jose Gonzalez. We do have some stats here to kind of put some numbers to what we saw in the first half. So, Dan, you want to go ahead and give the good people some numbers? Yeah, Jim. We got uh, Mount Carmel rushing, 18 attempts for 110 yards, five first downs. Passing-wise, we're one of three for 29 yards. Um, and going over to the, the Shikolimi side, 17 rushes for four yards. Ooh. And four of nine passing for 29 yards. So passing-wise, on the same, same uh, numbers there with the yardage. But you think about it, Jim, it, the way those numbers sound, it sounds like this should be a much more of a, a much more yeah. distance on that scoreboard. You know what I mean? So credit to Shikolami's defense for, for doing everything that they can to keep this game right here. They're they're gonna be I think they're gonna be imploring the offense here to start the second half. Like we need to get we need to get the ball moving. We need to get something going. Yeah so I mean like you said the Red Tornadoes have 14 points on the board. Uh, they got six of them or seven I guess I should say if we count the stellar extra point. They got seven of them on a 10 yard Farinato run. Yeah. And they got the other seven, courtesy of an interception slash fumble scoop and score from Stellar. <laughs> yeah. So it's not like there have been these big sustained drives. It's just to this point, the Red Tornadoes have, I guess we'll say, done a better job of avoiding the big mistake uh, where we've seen the Braves have some trouble with the snaps, uh, take some bad sacks, uh, and then, of course, you, you get down inside your own. Uh, you know, in the shadow of your own goalpost there and try to punt, it's always a little dangerous. Right, and, it, and it's not to say that the Red Tornado's offense has been, you know, completely stifled. I mean, they've definitely moved the ball down the field. Yeah. But just when they get to that, to that you know, last 25, 30 yards there, it seems like they kind of run out of gas and the, the Braves' defense toughens up. We'll see that Red Tornado offense first here in the second half. Looks like number seven, Nick Kuntz, is going to do the kicking off for the for the Braves. But we'll see, Dan. Like you said, Red Tornadoes found a little bit of success with that, as they often do, yeah. with that inside trap to Verano. Uh, but again, they also got stuck, yeah. stuffed a couple times with it uh, as the Braves, you know, that there's all kinds of tape <laughs> over yeah. the last seven years on that play. And that's what I was thinking too, Jim. You know, you think uh, Coach Dara is a very, very scheme-minded guy. He, he sticks with, with what he knows and what his players know, and they do it very, very well. Yeah. There's sometimes, you know, Coach Kaiser's been doing this for a long time. He's been coaching for a while. He's a very, very good coach himself, and uh, watched a lot of tape, and maybe, maybe Coach Darry's going to have to pull, pull out the wrinkles. Coons is going to kick it short. It's a squib kick, and the Red Tornadoes have trouble falling on it. We'll see who gets it. It was in the, in the area of Bradley, but the Red Tornadoes had a hard time corralling that. And they do, fortunately yeah. for them. Uh, it'll be first and 10 Mount Carmel at the 41-yard line. Yeah, good job there. Like you said, it looked like Bradley had a little bit of a tough time corralling it, but Dalton Moser, Johnny on the spot there that time, hopped on top of Bradley, who I believe was on top of the ball, covered his teammate <laughs> up. So good job there by Moser being heads up and Bradley being heads up as well. So we'll see what the Big Red decides to do here to get this, kind of get this offense in gear. They come out with their with their tight formation, the shotgun double wing. Feliciano has Stellar to his left. It's Davin and Farinato to the right. That's going to be Stellar up the middle. He's going to bounce to the right. He tries to get outside, and he's not going to be able to do it. A good job again by the Braves making sure that he can't get the corner, though he will get about six yards on that one. Yeah, it's definitely still a good pickup there by Stellar. D did a good job. Not seeing anything inside, bouncing that out and, and getting to the, the sideline there to get what he got. But again, we, you know, we talk about that lateral quickness of that, that Braves defense. Second and five, it'll be from the 47 yard line now for the Red Tornadoes. Farinato split out to the left, Schultz to the right. Spears is in there now on the wing to the left. Feliciano's kind of by himself in the shotgun. Verano comes in motion, they fake it to him. Feliciano's gonna try to go up the middle, but again, the Braves are home and stop him, but there is a flag on the play. 
Yeah, and that's thrown in the area of holding Jim, so we'll see what the, what the call is for sure. And that is what it was. So again, that's more, you talk about scheme. Yeah. That's more Coach Dara just looking at that and saying, okay, so we've shown you this a couple times, or we come out in this package and we give it to Verano on that inside handoff. Well, this time we're going to fake that and keep it to uh, let Feliciano keep it. But again, the, the Braves were ready for it. So it was not much of a gain to begin with. And then you throw in the holding penalty and it's going to wind up being second uh, and fifth, ex six, excuse me, second and 16 now back at the 35. Yeah, we talked about it before. These Braves, they're stout up the middle, Jim. They got some, they got some decent size on that defensive line. Their linebackers move well. And that, like I said, that uh, Rashawn Martin at, at safety is, is like, a, like a monster back back there. He's been all over the field. David and Verano are in the wing to the right, Spears in the wing to the left. They're gonna snap it to the up man, it's to Davitt. He'll get to the 39 about, so it'll give him, give him four yards there. Make it third and 12 with 10.50 left in the third quarter. And Jim, you know, we're one of three in the first half, in the first half, passing-wise, with a 29-yard completion, big completion to Schultz um, from Feliciano, but he did throw two interceptions. So I'm not entirely sure what Coach Dyer wants to do, but I think he's gonna he's gonna have to start switching things up a little bit here and put the ball in the air a little bit more because this Braves are defending the run really well. Big play here early in the third quarter. Verano comes in motion, he'll get all the way across. Feliciano takes a snap, he's gonna roll out that way. He throws, he looks for Farinato and he's got him. Does Farinato come down? Farinato comes down with the catch. There's a flag on the play as well. And it looked like based on the signal of the official on that side, it's a, it's gonna be a hit to the helmet. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't see that but one. I, but. I, I didn't wanna call it targeting because it's not, you know, I, I think it, in the rule book it's probably targeting, but it, it, oh, no, excuse me. So it's a pass interference, it's gonna be declined, okay. Yeah, So that, okay. that makes more sense. I thought, you know, the kind of the fist to the forehead is what I saw of, uh, from the official initially, but they opted to go with a pass interference, declined, first and 10, red tornadoes. Yeah, and, and Jim, you know, I, like I said, that's a really, really nice job there by Feliciano, getting that ball out to Farinato on the run, and Farinato caught that ball in stride. So it was a perfectly placed ball. So it's at the 38-yard line for the Red Tornadoes now. Stellar goes in motion. They're going to hand it to Farinato back on the left side, and he's in the open field. He bounces in and out, and now he's got an open field. Stepko knocks the ball out of his hands. The Braves are going to recover it. Oh, my goodness. What a tremendous play by number 27. Colton Stemko came flying up from behind and punched the ball loose from Farinato, and it looks like there's a Red Tornado down on the play. Yeah, Jim, I believe that is Farinato down. Now, while they, while they tend to Farinato, we, I have to look. So they got the ball spotted at the goal line. So that's where it's a little bit tricky here. So there's a hold against the Red Tornadoes that it's gonna be waved off by the Braves. Yeah, so where where was the recovery made? That's is this I'm a touchback to or, is this, or is this a... Because I mean, this could this could both very well or very bad for the Braves to pin right. it upon what's going on. So I'm not seeing that they're moving that football. That's on about the one inch line. Yeah, and I think that's where it's gonna be, Jim. So Farinata will get up. He's gonna walk off under his own power, gingerly albeit, but under his own power. So that's always good to see. Um, and for the time being, at least, the Braves have once again uh, turned the Red Tornadoes away. But that's, honestly, watching, I'm gonna, I wanna go back this week and watch that, that play because Stemko covered ground there like he was DJ Metcalf running down Buda Baker. Yeah, he did, he absolutely like, did, Jim. It, he looked like he just came out of nowhere, ran past everyone else, and, and got there to, to knock that ball out of Farinato's arm. But um, so yeah, this, yeah. Is a, this is a, a precarious yeah. position. I, I would expect to see uh, Wortman under center here. Yeah, uh, po probably the wing tee. I don't think we're gonna see the spread. Right. Not right off the bat, at least. So Pfeiffer's by himself out to the left, but they're gonna be pretty tight otherwise. Wortman is gonna go under center. He'll have Stemko 
and Wolf behind him. And he's just going to take a QB sneak to try to pick up a couple yards there. Uh, he'll get... He won't be standing in the end zone when they snap it again. Let's say that at least. <laughs> right, that's a that's, uh, uh, small victory. And at least at that point, he'll be able to uh, have a little bit of room to work. Looks like Workman's kind of hobbling a little bit, running to the sideline there. So he'll get a yard. He has, he has been taking some hits this game. He has, and that's always a lot when you have the quarterback run all the way to the sideline to yeah. get the play and get back. It is. Um, especially if he's a mobile quarterback like Workman. Right. So he'll get it. He'll only give him a yard. It's going to be second and nine now from the two, 908 and counting here in the third quarter, 14 nothing Red Tornadoes. And Workman is going to throw it. And he's got Pfeiffer in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and it's tipped a great play made by Spears, who was on an island by himself. Yeah, and Jim, that's not what you like to see there for, for Spears. Um, for Because, like we talked about, the, the, the size difference in Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer being 6'3", 170 pounds, Spears is running, what, about 5'8", probably, 5'9"? Well, we got him listed at 5'9". Okay, so he's given up five, six inches to, to Pfeiffer there on an island, but that's what being the fastest kid on the team right. team does for you. You're going to be singled up in coverage, and you're going to be expected to produce. Like and they're going to they're try to do it again. This time, actually, going to hand it off to Wolf, who does a good job bouncing through tacklers, and now he's in the open field. He'll get the first down, a huge Shoot. first down, so that if nothing else, you're not punting out of your end zone the next time you face the fourth down. Um, but there is a red tornado down, so we'll stop the clock again. That's a touchdown-saving tackle there by by Spears, too, coming from that corner spot. So two big plays in a row there by Spears. Well, and I know I can only speak for myself, but when you come out and you throw that ball to Pfeiffer, again, it, it does exactly what it's intended to do. It takes the top off, right? Mm -hmm. You say, hey, yep. we will throw it from here. And so I'm looking at Pfeiffer. I'm thinking they're going to throw it again. Right. And they, they give it to Wolf. Wolf's a tough runner to begin with. Again, he's got, uh, you know, he had 10 carries for 101 yards and a touchdown coming into tonight on the season. So he's giving you 10 yards a carry. Um, he had seven for 88 last week versus yeah. Loyal Sox. So he's a tough runner, talented kid. Um, and as we as they tend to the Red Tornado here, we just you think again, this has been a, a game of of breaks really thus far. The Red Tornadoes have caught some, the Braves not so much. Yeah. And that seems to be the difference in the score here: 14 nothing Red Tornadoes, 8:48 left in the third quarter. Yeah, and you know we talked about it. I mean, it, you're you're 100 percent right Th talking about the breaks that the Red Tornadoes have kind of caught as opposed to the Braves. I mean, the Braves have had three three turnovers. They've tur the, the Tornadoes have turned the ball over three times to the Braves with no points coming from it. So that is tough. Yep. That is tough for, for the Braves. And it was Spears who was the Red Tornado down, but he was able to pop up and, and get off the field. So great to see there. Farinato's back. Yeah. Uh, Diaz is going to spell Spears as he has before, so he's now... Uh, drawn the assignment of Pfeiffer. Wortman back in the shotgun, four wide. They're going to fake the handoff, and he's going to throw a go route again, but that time he's going to be out of reach of Pfeiffer. And you see, Jim, you, you know, it's, it's funny we talked about, um, you know, Coach Kaiser having some experience and stuff like that. And he was always, he's always been a quarterback that, that like, or a coach that liked to give his, his quarterback the opportunity to throw the ball, put the ball in the air. He did it in his, his past employments and stuff like that, and he's doing it here now. Doing that a lot, you realize, you, you see mismatches. Yeah. And you see, okay, the, the guy that's been covering this guy just went out. Yep. They got somebody fresh off the bench coming in here, off the sideline coming in. Let's go after it, as he does right there. But great job by Diaz. Getting a jam off the line, not letting him have anything. This time it's going to be a handoff up the middle, Ooh. and the Red Tornadoes are ready for that when they stop. We'll see. Exactly what New Jersey that was. If it was, I think it was Stemko. It was. Yep, they'll stop him after a gain of about two. It's going to be third and eight from the 21. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was Stellar coming from the linebacker spot. Obviously, he got stacked up there at the line of scrimmage, but somebody coming from distance there put a good hit on yeah. Stemko there and, and uh, took him backwards. Well, and to your point before about you know Diaz spelling Spears there. Uh, you also saw Farinato was in coverage there too, so he kind of shaded that way a little bit, but it's it's going to be a little harder. There's a big formation to the left. It's three receivers. Wortman's going to roll out, and he's going to throw, and you're trying to hit that comeback route again, and it was wide of the target. So it'll be fourth down, and the Braves are going to look to punt. Yeah, and that's a, that's a good job there by Diaz covering that because that's that's a tough one. A, a seasoned, you got a senior 
receiver who's been doing it for a long time. He comes down running the comeback route. You know, you know what happens at the at the at the top of those routes. You get that little push off. Diaz didn't budge and did a good job defending that. Wortman didn't really have anywhere to throw it. It's a good snap to Pfeiffer to take his time and get off a good punt. It's gonna be fair caught by Farinato at the Red Tornado 43. So that's where they'll start their drive here with 7.42 left in the third quarter and holding a 14-0 lead over the Braves. And good news there too. We've seen Farinato go out after the fumble and then we saw Spears go out. Um, looks like both of them were back in there for the, for the punt return. So that's good news to see them both back out there. And, and I know we mentioned it, I think in the first half, we're also seeing Nick Nesco back out there at, at the guard yeah. spot after we saw him yep. hobble off the field a little bit earlier in the game. So very good news. Keep everybody healthy. So we'll have to see here what the Red Tornado and Coach Dara dial up. Uh, not much from an offensive standpoint thus far tonight. They're going to let Stellar take it up the middle. He's going to get across the 45 to the 47. It's going to bring up second and five. It looks like there was a pretty obvious face mask there that didn't get called. Yeah. But Stellar's going to be down on the play. Well, that's, that's usually what happens when you get in the middle of the field there, get in a pile, and it's, you know, the refs kind of get blinded. They're worried about spotting the ball. They don't, don't see the extracurriculars going on there. Um, yeah, and I don't know that that was anything malicious. I think he's right, just he's right. running through, and you're just trying to grab something. And, the, and that's and that's the whole thing. That's that was one of those runs there by Stellar where he knew he realized that they haven't been getting much up the middle right. throughout the first half and, and the you know the beginning part of this second half. So he took that ball and hit the hole at full speed. Just put his put his shoulders down and uh, got what he could. And he did a good job of it, getting five yards. Well, I think that's where if you're Coach Darren now. Yeah. And Dan, you've got more experience with this than I do, so so you know I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. But you grabbing those those big hosses that you've got up front and saying, "Hey, give me a drive here." I think so. Yeah, I, I do. I think I think you you kind of get your your guys that are leaders on the team. You know, the the, the big boys, they're veterans. You pull that whole entire offensive line, and you say, "Listen, we're gonna we're gonna run it behind you the rest of the yeah. rest of the game." I. You guys are what we. You guys are what keeps us in games when we can't do anything offensively. We'll always open a couple of holes, and we're gonna we're gonna run behind you through the rest of it. So Stellar is gonna walk off. Good news there for the Red Turtles. We'll see what they opt to go with, what formation if they if they're gonna straight substitute Stellar or if they'll flip their offense a little bit. It looks like they're going to go more wide open. They'll have Verano and Spears in there. Oh, yeah. I like it. Put it in the air. Let's see. Feliciano brings Spears in motion. He's going to fake it to him. He's going to go up the middle and put his head down. A great play there made by Gage Wolf, number 24 for the Braves. will stop Feliciano before he can get to the stick. So, again, it looks like a tough spot for him. Uh, Looks like he got a little more maybe than where the ball spotted here, but nevertheless, it was still short. It'll be third and two. Yeah, and I think, well, I think we'll see something like that again with Stellar still uh, still on the sideline. Not really too much beef back in there, so we're going to keep it opened up, and I think we're going to see Feliciano putting his head down going for the first down here on himself. Same formation, at least. That's going to be a fake, and it's David up the middle. So it'll be the direct snap to Davitt. Feliciano does a great job of carrying out the fake. But Davitt picked up the first down. He'll get down to the 30, excuse me, the 41-yard line. But now he's down with what looks like a cramp. Yeah, and that's, it's, you know, coming into the second half here, um, it was a warm day today. It's a little bit cooler now, but it gets hot down there on the field, Jim. These guys are, are they're all very well conditioned. Um, you know, the, the, the training team out there, the trainers, Star Physical Therapy, Tom Swaldy, um, they do an awesome job keeping these guys hydrated. But you're out there playing yeah. both ways, you're going to cramp up no matter no matter what. And yeah, it's still it's still mid 60s out here. Yeah. Um, so they they stretch David out again, take an opportunity. We talked about it a little bit before. Uh, Supper Club, Supper Club is alive and well after a little bit of a hiatus that everybody kind of had to take last year. Um, due to COVID. 
So we have here, it's another season of Mount Carmel area football. Means another season of Supper Club. Supper Club gives the community a chance to interact with different players, cheerleaders, and band members, as well as get some information from the coaching staff on the upcoming game. So if you're interested in that, again, uh, Supper Club is being held at the West End in Coleman and the Knights of Columbus in Mount Carmel. It alternates weeks. Uh, food is being provided by Hollywood and Chicatanos. So great food, great conversation, just a whole lot of fun on a Thursday night. So keep keep your eyes and ears out to know uh, exactly where it is each week. But make your way down to Supper Club if and when you can. Yeah, looks like they're getting, you got David up, but he's trying to get stretched out here. Yep. So David's having a big night tonight. Yes, he is. Um, offensively, plays like that are, are crucial, uh, but certainly for David, the two big sacks defensively, uh, one of which led almost directly to points when you consider the the, ret the punt return and, and everything else that happened. But first and 10, Mount Carmel, 42-yard line, 620 and counting. They're up 14 nothing. Feliciano keeps it himself again. He's going to pick his way. He'll get up over the 35. Yeah, that's another another really good run there by Dav or uh, by Feliciano. And now we're going to get a flag. So there's a lot of a lot of chatter, we'll say, going on in the field. Yeah. Um, not sure where it's originating. We're not even sure where this flag's going to come from or, or where it's going to go. But it is happening. So we're going to do a dead ball here. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Red Tornadoes and against the Braves. So a good job there by the officials of trying to get a handle on this. Yeah, for sure. They're going to offset. An offset now. Yeah, so we'll, we'll we should stick where we're at here. Right. Yep. Dead ball after Second the play. The ball shouldn't yep. move. We should just Second be. Second three. Yep. From the 35. All right. So we'll back. We're back in business here. Clock winds again to six minutes. Red tornadoes are tight. Luciano takes a snap. He hands it to Varan on the left side. He stays on his feet. Does a good job of fighting this. The Braves were ready for that, but Verano muscled his way through for some extra yardage. Stellar is back out there now yeah. as well, which is a, a welcome sign for the Red Tornadoes. It was, it's the first, he got the first down, so it'll be first and 10 Mount Carmel now from the 30. Yeah, and that was, that was a really, really good play there by, by Verano. Just getting what he could there. He yeah. kind of ran into the back of a blocker where it was stacked up there, spun off of that, spun out of another tackler, and got turned, you know, what, what would have been a minimal gain, if anything, into you know, a nice five-yard gain in the first down. So now, a little slow here getting to the line, the Red Tornadoes now, it's four seconds on the play clock. They'll just get it off, Feliciano keeps it himself. He tries to bounce to the outside, he's in the open field, he, ooh. Almost makes the tackler miss. A good job out there. Not totally sure who that was. It was hard to see from the far side, but then the, the brave defender out there right, held yeah. on just enough to prevent Pedro Feliciano from waltzing in for another touchdown. Yeah, they did a nice job. But, and and stopped us from getting another first down, too, which I thought that was easily going to be a first down. Second and two now from the 22. Zarski in motion, excuse me, with the hand it to Verano, and that's not there right now. The Braves are ready for it again. That inside handoff to Verano, they're going to lose a yard here. It'll bring up third and three from the 24 with 420 here in the third quarter at Shikolami Stadium. And Jim, I know they had that, that play uh, snuffed out there with Verano, and you know, obviously Verano had the ball, so the defense is going to flow that way, but I think if they decide to go with that pitch to Zarski here, I think they might might be able to have enough room, at least at least enough for him to get the first down and beat some guys to the corner on this right side. A hard count there from Feliciano. They'll get movement, and now it's a question of who moved and and did the the Braves certainly move? But I think they were. 
is their move what caused the Red Tornadoes to move? And it looks like no. That's they're usually get... what it is, is the, the movements, you know, they, they're, they're drawn off sides and that causes an issue there, but. Yep. And so that's gonna be false start against the Red Tornadoes. It'll make that third and four, third and nine, and take the ball back to the 29 yard line. And so we'll see what Coach Dyer decides to do here with third, third and long now. Again, again, it seems like the Red Tornadoes just continue to kind of shoot themselves in the foot. They got to drive moving, and now they put themselves in a, in a tough down in distance. Feliciano sends Zarski in motion. They pitch it to him. And number 57, Curtis Raker, was there all the way. Knife through whatever blocks the Red Tornadoes tried to throw at him and hit Zarski on a dead sprint. The Red Tornadoes are fortunate. Raker didn't take that pitch and go the other way. So it's fourth and 15 now for the Red Tornadoes, and I think we'll see Stellar for the first time. Yeah, yeah, this is this is gonna be Stellar's first punt. And this is a an interesting spot to do it. I'd like to see Stellar get a little directional kick here and try and pin the Braves deep. Two forty-five. It's a good snap. Stellar's punt was good. Um, Got another flag against the Red Tornadoes here. Might not be a bad bad thing there actually for the Big Red with that with that penalty. Give Stellar an extra five yards to work with on this punt that he's going to try and he's going to try and put deep. Well, and I think too, watching what we've seen of this game. That extra five yards also makes it that much more likely that Pfeiffer might try to return this. So it's a good snap, and Stellar is a good kick. It's a high kick. Pfeiffer's gonna take the fair catch. Or are they gonna mark that at the 13 yard line? So 2.30 left in the third quarter. Red Tornado's up 14 uh, but We've got another flag on the play. Yeah, I think it's gonna be on, uh, on the Braves here. I think it's, it's gonna be another dead ball foul against Shikalimi this time. I believe it's gonna be just against Shikalimi this time. So we'll see personal foul against the Braves. So that'll be a half the distance penalty at that point. So take it to about, what's that? Give you about the six and a half, that's seven that's and a half? I would say, no, six yeah. and a half, excuse me. Yeah, so, uh, we'll, so we'll see here, it looks like they're Big Red switching things out, bringing in the the, uh, the beef, it looks like. Yep. Can, you know, got them down this deep. We might see them go to that wing tee, um, especially after Wolf broke off a, a, a decent run there on the, their last drive. Ball still not set yet. All right, so they did get it now. Back at this, looks like we'll call it the seven for ease of... Uh, of announcing purposes, Dan, for us. Yeah, that's fair. Six and a half, seven. Seven sounds better. So again, Piper's down here by himself with Spears again. Wormit under center. He's got Stemko and Wolf in the backfield, and he's gonna hand it to, I think that's Stemko. Yeah, I think it was Stemko, Jim. And and you know what? I think I think part of the, the reason that we see Spears get get kind of put on an island out there by himself, because the, the safety of his side is Farinato. Well, both Farinato and Verano do an awesome job helping in the yeah. run in the run game. So they gotta stay there and make sure that that's a run coming at them. And sometimes Pfeiffer and, and Spears are six yards behind him and they can't get back over there for that help. So they pitch it this time to Wolf, who's gonna try to get to the outside, but a great play made there by Farinato, to your point, Dan, coming up in run support and dragging Wolf down after a gain of about five. It's gonna bring up third and five. And Jim, that's, these safeties are, are so quick. Um, you know, for Verano and Farinato, we see them carrying the ball on the offensive side of the ball. We see them returning uh, punts and kicks. They're, they're so fast and they have such a great, uh, Instincts. They, they, as soon as they see that that ball handed off or, or pitched, they're coming up to 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 help and support. So big third down here. 
This time Stemp goes to the left, split out. Wortman's gonna roll to his right and try to throw to Hoffman, it looks like. No, he's gonna go deep for Piper. He got behind the defense, and he made the catch, and now it's a foot race. The only guy that's got a chance is Randall, and he's not gonna get him. Piper's gonna go, but this is gonna be 87 yard pitch and catch. There's no flags on the field. A huge play by the Braves, right when they needed it the most. And Jim, we knew that this was gonna break big at some point. They kept yep. going to Pfeiffer. That, that, that big, that big uh, veteran receiver you have there at, at that wideout spot, you keep going to him, you keep going to him. At some point, he's gonna, he's gonna get behind yep. the defense or he's gonna be able to go up over top of a defender with his 6'3 frame and get that ball. And that was it. Huge, huge play for the Braves. We wait the extra point. Kuntz is on to attempt it. Looks like Pfeiffer's gonna hold. Just in case you didn't think he's done enough tonight. The Red Tomatoes blocked the extra point. And that is a big, that big was, play by Davich. Yep, that, that, could, that could turn into a, a decision maker on that point there, moving forward in this game. So a huge answer there. And Dan, again, we talked about it before and you mentioned it too. The Red Tornadoes seemed like up to this point, all the breaks had gone their way. Yeah. But they let the Braves hang around. And you have Wortman, you have Pfeiffer. Multiple times he's been a step behind the Red Tornado defense and the ball's just been a little short, yeah. giving them an opportunity to make a play on it. That time, uh, it was a beautiful ball. Yeah, Pfeiffer and, made and, a great play in coverage and then just was able to outrun the Red Tornadoes. And Wortman was under pressure too. Wortman got hit and was on his way down as he released that ball and just put it on a dime. He, he, he placed it beautifully and gave Piper the opportunity to just to catch it in stride and then outrun everybody to the end zone. So this is this is gonna be a big drive here for the Red Tornadoes. If they're not able to answer, this, is, this game's gonna get pretty interesting. Yeah, we're 47 seconds from starting the final period here. Kuntz will come on to kick off for the Red Tornadoes. It's Spears and Farinato back deep. And the guys in this front line here need to be aware of the, the, that last kickoff at, at the, to start the second half. Rolled right up there to Bradley and he almost was not able to get on top of it because that ball was trying to skirt away from him. Yeah, that's a, that's a good observation, Dan. We'll see what the Braves try to do here as they certainly seem to have the momentum at the moment and may look to capitalize. It's gonna get through back to Farinato who fielded at about the 17. And a huge tackle there made. Again, the tackle's gonna be, looks like Rashawn Martin again, because that guy is also everywhere tonight. Yeah, he has been. But it looked like, it looked like 68 or 65. I didn't, I didn't get the, yeah, that's, the exact jersey number, but turned, pretty much turned Farinato yep. inside into Martin. Yep, so a great uh, special teams play there made by the, by the Braves and the Red Tornadoes are gonna get a sideline warning now here to boot. Oh boy. Well, at least, at least it's a, a warning and not a penalty. You know, I, I think I remember, was it was it last year? Maybe the year prior that we got one, the, no warning. Just, just immediately yeah. a 15 yard penalty for the sideline infraction and that was it. Yep. So did they, Feliciano keeps himself. And that's a good run there by Pedro. That's a really, really nice job there by Pedro, getting up in there and, and uh, you know, carrying out, the, the backs carry out their fakes and, and that play works so much better if they actually are able to carry out their fakes and because then you get you got guys going with the fake pitch, you get yeah. guys going with the fake motion and stuff like that. They carry that out, they do much better. Yep, so it'll be second and two. To get you out to the 38 yard line. We'll see if they snap it here. They do get a snap off. It's gonna be the handoff to Farinato on the left side. And he'll get the first down. He'll get out to the 43 yard line. And that's where we'll end the third quarter. We got three quarters in the books here. It's Red Tornadoes 14, Braves six. Yeah, and this, Jim, this is a, 
turn it into an interesting ball game here. You know, we, we got the, the Braves just getting that, that humongous play there by Piper. And now, yeah. the, you, you know, the Red Tornadoes need to, they got to find a way to put the ball in the end zone. They, they've been able to, to move the ball down the field at will. And then they, they get two or three first downs, and then they get stopped. Yep. Well, I think the reality is when you look at these two squads and you look at the sidelines, Pfeiffer is the big play threat. He's the biggest big play threat on the field right now. Absolutely. And and to your point about the Red Tornadoes needing to finish some of these drives, the Braves have shown now that they can score from 90 yards out, right? Yeah, from anywhere. So anything that doesn't end in points is isn't a victory at this point for Mount Carmel. Yeah, but yeah, a hundred percent. You know, you think you, you pin them deep and you'll be fine. And that's that's not how it's going to work. You know, these uh, these Braves can definitely score from anywhere with that big play capability and. You're right. Points is points is what Big Red needs. Right. So we'll see how how Coach Darren and Company opt to attack this fourth quarter, cling to an eight point lead here. First and ten from their own 44. Feliciano sends Stellar in motion. He fakes the handoff to Farinato, but again the Braves do a great job of staying home there, and Feliciano's only able to get about three yards. It'll be second and seven. Oh, well, Jim, you talk about it. You know, Coach, Coach. Kaiser has watched a, I'm sure, a ton of film on this Red Tornado offense. And, you know, you got it. That's that's the, the main thing that you're telling your defensive, de your defensive ends, your defensive yeah. backs, is stay home. There's so much misdirection in this offense. You got to, everybody's got to do their job. Don't try to do too much. Ball at the 47. Feliciano's going to hand it to Stellar off the right side. He's in some open field. He's going to be stopped just across midfield at the 48. It'll be third and two for the Red Tornadoes here. But this is where we go back. This is where Coach, it looks like Coach Dyer is going back to the, you know, the, the offense that we're used to seeing from yeah. these guys. Staying on schedule. Three yards in a cloud of dust. Three, four yards. You know what I mean? Get your first downs and keep the ball on the ground. And at this point, in this close of a game, Keep that clock moving. Yep. So we'll see what they do here. Again, they've tried that inside handoff on third down a couple times, and it's been stuffed. They'll see if they go back to the well or if they try something different. And they're going to fake the inside handoff, and Feliciano's going to go up the middle and pick up the first down, and he's on his feet. Feliciano, he's down the field. He's going to get dropped. A touchdown-saving tackle by every definition of the phrase by number 27, Colton Stimko, but not before the Red Tornadoes pick up a huge chunk of yardage. Feliciano down to the nine. Yeah, and that's a great play there by Feliciano. Just refusing to go down, stepping out of tackles, and making a huge play there on a, a pivotal third down. So it'll be first and goal from the nine. 10 12 left in the first, or excuse me, in the fourth quarter here. The Red Trainers are up a score, 14 6. Feliciano this time, he hands it to Stellar, and Stellar weaves his way in. That's going to be touchdown, Red Tornado. So they answer right back, right away. And with 10 minutes left, it's 20 to 6. Yeah, and that's, a, that's huge. That is huge for this Red Tornado team. Just going out there. All the momentum is it seemed like it was in the Shikalimi Braves' hands, and you go back out there and you take it back. And that's that's a humongous play. This point here is going to be big for Stellar as well. Yeah, if you can get it to 15, you keep the extra uh, two-point conversion in play here. It's a good snap, a good hold, and the kick is good. And, and who would have thought anything else, right? I, I like those ones when Stellar takes all seven of the points. I, <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. Probably makes it much easier to score, too. So I, as we as we watched the second half, Dan, I, you kind of started to ask yourself, where was the Red Tornado offense going to come from? Right. Again, you had the first touchdown was the 10-yard Farinato run. Yep. Uh, we've seen them pick up 10, 12 yards tonight, so that, that wasn't anything kind of out of the ordinary. Yeah. And then the crazy defensive touchdown. Right. Uh, but offensively, they kind of stagnated for a little while. They did. They did. And, and you wonder who's going to give it to you, who's going to get you back. And it's Feliciano and it's Stellar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, it's, to it's, nobody's it's, surprise. Right. It's, it's your bread and butter. It's your, your veteran guys back there. 
we, we see the, the explosiveness of Verano and Farinato and Spears and Schultz and Chicatano, all those yep. guys. But when you need six, you go to your veteran guys and you say, hey, so who wants it? Somebody's got to get me six. And Stellar and Feliciano pair up there to, to put that one in. And Stellar will kick off this time. Jagodinski had done the last couple. And Drew will get his chance to make a tackle here. You see, he's the, he's the inside guy oh, yeah. on the far side of the field. Pfeiffer and Morgan back deep for the Braves. Again, exactly 10 minutes left in this one. Good kick by Stellar. Going to be Morgan at the, at the 10. He's going to get across the 15 to 20. He's going to put his foot in the ground. There's a block, block in, in the, the back. back there. Wow. Uh, look, look. We got That's... a flag on the far <laughs> side of the field. And if he's going to call that block in the back that was right in front of that referee, I, I commend him for seeing that. So we'll see what happened here. Uh, looked like Schultz went over and said, you, you saw that? <laughs> so Morgan, for the time being, is down at the... Yep, they're going to get the block in the back there. Uh, so it was called. It'll be first and ten Braves. But we'll see that we're going to walk this off to. Uh, they'll walk it back to the... They'll call it the 15, which is basically, or 14, excuse me, which is basically where uh, Morgan fielded it. Yeah. And Jim, I, I got to tell you, I'm even more impressed that but that, that touchdown pass that Workman made last uh, on the last drive because he still seems to be a little hobbled out there. Like, it doesn't seem like he's, he's yeah. on two, two solid ankles currently. So they're going to spread out. They're going to throw right away. It's a quick screen, and he overthrows. Morgan. Well, we'll see if he overthrew Morgan or if there was a miscommunication and he expected Hoffman to be there. Yeah, because Hoffman looked like he was running on a quick slant there. Maybe they were trying to get the ball to Morgan um, with Hoffman kind of running that slant as a pick. Right. Um, that's usually the, the play, but we'll, you know, we can only speculate at this point <laughs> unless we can get into, uh, into the huddle down there and see what happens. Second and ten. Two to the right, two to the left for Wortman. It's going to be a handoff up the middle to Schaefer Knights. So he's going to be hit hard at the 20. It's going to be third and five. Yeah, that's a that's a good little pickup there just to, to kind of keep keep the Red Tornadoes honest. You, you know they're having success throwing the ball. You got you got to mix in a run here and there. You can't just come out here and throw the ball on all four downs. And, when you, and that's the other thing I think both sides here need to remember. When you're like the Braves and you can score from anywhere on the field, you got nine minutes and two scores, that's nothing. And that's the thing, Jim. Do, do, is, is this one of those situations where we're already starting to get to, to fourth down territory? If this goes to fourth and five here, we'll have to see. Portman's going to throw again. He's got Hoffman. It's almost intercepted. Feliciano had it in his hands. He saw the slant coming the whole way. Yeah. But it'll fall incomplete. So, Dan, we'll see what the answer is. It's fourth and five from their own 20. I think we're going to see a punt. I think so, too. I, th I, th I think this is the right decision. You've still got nine minutes left. You have all of your timeouts. And like you said, you have that big play capability. Um, plus, you throw the ball. You know, even if there's an incompletion, the clock's stopping. So, good, good decision here by Coach Kaiser. Red Tornadoes, two guys back, as you pointed out before. They're going to set up a return here. It's a good snap. Pfeiffer is a good punt in the direction of Fernando. He's going to take a fair catch right away. They're going to stop it at the 46 yard line. It'll be first and 10 Red Tornadoes. They're up 21 6 with 8.53 left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, so we'll see here. The, you know, uh, took Feliciano's big run to kind of get the uh, offense going last yeah. drive. So we'll see what they decide to do here. I, I, I mean, at this point, you're up, you're up 15 with. Just under nine minutes left in the fourth quarter in a game that has been much closer on the field yeah. than it has been on the oh, on yeah. the scoreboard. I think you got to just pound the rock. You don't don't try to get cute with it. Don't don't do any fancy stuff. Just run the ball. And the Red Trails are going to come out tight. This looks just like it did at the very beginning of the game. First play of the game. Stellar to the right. David and and Verano. They'll give it to Verano, and he's up in the middle. And now he's going to try to bounce to the outside. Again, a good tackle there made by Stemko from behind. 
Yeah, really nice play there by, by Stemko. And he's he's been the guy kind of kind of making the, the touchdown saving tackles because he was the only guy left for Verano to beat. Verano does a really good job of once he gets past that second level of defenders, those linebackers, he tries to get to the edge. Yeah, and it, it, which is obviously that's that's what you're taught. I mean, you got the running back coach, Coach Beach over there. Um, I think he knows a thing or two about yeah, running backs. I, say, I, think, I think he's coached a few good running backs in his career. So, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll let him keep doing his thing. It's going to be stellar this time at the right. He'll get the first down, and he's going to put his head down to finish the drive across the 40. Yes. See, oh, they're going to give it. They're going to say he's at the 40, so it'll be first and 10 red tornadoes from there. Yeah, Jim, and Stellar has done a really good job this game of just kind of getting what he can get and then and then finishing his runs, putting his head down. You know, he's not trying to get too cute. He's not, he's not risking ball security, trying to fight for extra yards or anything like that. He's just be, being a bruiser, putting his shoulder down and finishing his runs. Red Torino staying in the middle of the field, making sure the only way the clock is going to stop is on a, well, on a possible pass here. Feliciano is going to go back. Now he's going to run. So he dropped back to throw. Didn't like what he see and what he saw and took off pretty quickly across the 35 to 34. It's going to be second and four from there. Yeah, and that's uh, it's one of those things. It looks like Coach Dara trying to pull out a little uh, trickery there with the, with the play action. Um, but again, Feliciano keeps it and keeps that clock rolling, which is a good thing. Yeah, you wonder if there's something on the side that they saw. Um, Morgan's the safety back there. They saw him creeping up just a little bit too close to the line it, of scrimmage. It did look like Verano had some room when he came back. Well, they're going to do the snap to Davitt here in the open. Davitt's in the open field. Davitt's running. He's in the open. And it's going to get dropped by Morgan, who's the only one that had a chance. He's going to be inside the 10. We'll see. Did he get inside the 5? Yeah, he, I think he did, Jim. I think he's down there around the... Maybe not. Looks Maybe like they're going to put him at the 5. So it's going to be first and goal from the five. And those big boys up front, Dan, the Red Torinos are starting to take over a little bit. They are. And, and you know, we talk about it every time we see this, this offense play. It's a war of attrition. They're going to wear you down. Those big boys in the middle and the inside, they're going to wear you down running the ball. Oh, they tried the up snap again. It doesn't work. It falls to the turf. Fortunately for the Red Torinos, David's able to scoop it back up. Yeah. Looks like it only cost him a yard, but it very easily could have cost him possession. And that's yeah, and that's a tough one there too, because that's that, that direct snap. It's a it's kind of a, a trick play there. It's, it's an angled snap to David, and uh, not not the easiest thing for a center no. to do is, is no. do an angled snap. So I'm not sure if that was a you know, but we'll see. I, I like what Coach Derrick did there, trying to get David his score. But this time it's going to be Stellar again, and he's in again for another Red Tornado touchdown, this time from six yards out. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good job there. And with 546, it's now 27-6, Mount Carmel with the extra point pending. Yeah, and you know what, Jim, we talked about it. it uh, you know, Stellar, earlier in the game, we talked about him being creeping up, being third on that all-time scoring list. Putting six points on the board or, or, or taking all seven for himself is yep. definitely moving him up that leaderboard a lot quicker. You're getting him a lot closer to that two and three, two and one spot there. We'll see. It's a good snap, a good hold. The extra point is up and it is good. So that's going to be 28 6. So, Dan, to your point before. So if you look at Stellar's night, Stellar's got four extra points yep. and three touchdowns. So that's 22 points for Stellar by himself tonight. Yeah. Um, so pretty good deal there. And I think we had our buddy Jose, he was giving us those numbers earlier. So if you put all that together, so Stellar has 95. He Coming in tonight, he had 95 extra points for his career. So that puts him at 99. Yeah, so his next extra point will be his 100th career extra point, which is... Which is pretty remarkable, Jim. I mean, I know Stellar's been kicking since uh, I think was he was he a freshman when he yeah, started as the kicker? So. Yeah, that, and that's you know the, you get that time in and you, you continue to get better and you work with your coaches and you show dedication like these kids have done, especially Stellar. We've seen it over the past four years. He's he's 
automatic from that extra point mark. And I've seen him hit some some long ones in warm ups that I, I really think he could he could do. Yeah, and if you remember the last couple of years, he's also pretty darn good from two point on, on a two point conversion in the Wildcat. Yeah, he is absolutely. It's the kid with a nose for the end zone. Always finds a way to score. So he'll be on to do the kickoff as well. Same returners for the Braves. It's a deep kick. Morgan's going to take that all the way back in the five. So a huge boom from Stellar. Morgan does a good job getting in and out. Looks like Spears will be the first one there to kind of start slowing him up. And Morgan's going to run hard. Yeah. He got hit about the 30, but it's going to be first and 10 Braves from the 36. So he carried some red tornadoes there to get out to the 36. Yeah, he did. He, he definitely ran hard. He ran tough there and did a good job. Spears did a good job fighting off his block there. It looked like he got a little, there was a little, maybe a little hold in there too. He, he was able to fight away from it. And Morgan. And make the tackle. And Morgan's not a big kid. No, he's Morgan's not. Morgan's listed at 5'6", a buck 40. So for, he runs a lot wow. harder than that. Yeah, he, he definitely does. Those are usually the toughest ones to tackle too, Jim. Low to the ground. Yeah. Low center of gravity. It's always, always hard to get a good tackle on that. So we'll see what the Braves opt to do here. Down a couple scores now, 535 left in this one. Wortman under center. We're gonna hand it off. Let's see, that was Stemko. He'll get across the 40, near the 45. He'll get him to the 45, excuse me. So it's gonna be second and two from there. Yeah, that's a good job there by Farinato coming up from the safety spot to make a tackle there. Um, Stemko running tough. Did a nice job. Looked like he was supposed to go to the left-hand side there. Saw an alley and cut back and made it. Got a nice run. Looks like Diaz is in there in the corner. Uh, he's in for, I think, Feliciano. We see Spears on the other corner this time. It's going to be Stepko again. And Stepko gets a first down into Red Tornado territory down to the 44-yard line. So the Braves aren't going to go quietly. No, definitely not. And, you know, it looks like... Mount Carmel's defense is, is kind of geared up for the pass, and then you know they come they come out and two quick runs with Semko, and they're in plus territory already. At this point, though, the clock is the Braves' biggest enemy out there. Portman under center again, and it's going to be. Wolf this time, and he'll lose his, his footing and get down to the 41. He pick up a three. Yeah, good job there by Diaz. It looks like coming up from that corner spot, though. I know Wolf, Wolf kind of tripped himself up there. Yeah. Nobody really going to get credit for that tackle, but as Diaz came up and set the edge and forced Wolf to put his foot in the ground to turn up field, which is what caused him to slip. Wortman under center again. It's going to be Stemko getting off the right side. He's going to get the first down. He's going to run through a red tornado. But he'll not before, he won't be stopped before picking up the first down. So they'll keep the chains moving here. Tough runner at Stemko, Dan. He is. He is. And, and you know, he, he didn't. He hasn't had like a. A huge game tonight. They haven't really been feeding him too much with how much they've been putting the ball in the air. But he's showing right now that he has the potential to be a, a, a workhorse. Schaefer Knights will come off and Sean Martin will go in so we see if they look to throw it here, Dan. They've, they've thrown more when speed. Martin's been in the field, yeah. on the field. Excuse me. Pfeiffer by himself to the left. Martin's in that wing to the right now. Two receivers in the backfield. They're going to hand it to Martin. They just want to get him the ball. Try to get him to the outside, but a great play there made by... David. Yeah, very good play there by David. Did a nice job getting himself through that hole and into the backfield to make that attack. Yeah, get a, lo a loss of four there. And it looks like David's going to, it's a loss of three. David's going to be down with a, what looks like a cramp. Yeah. But that's a, a, again, you know, we talked about the the development that David's made. I mean, um, he's, he, last year, Got his opportunity at, at that linebacker spot. Did a really nice job of it. Unfortunately, there was a shortened season. You know, you weren't sure what was going to happen with a lot of these guys coming back off of a shortened year. You didn't get the full experience. You didn't get a whole season in. And they came back, and Stellar and Davitt are terrific in the middle. They, yeah. they, there's, 
there's no no offense that really can can run in between the tackles against this red tornado defense with the, with the, the tough defensive line and then those two guys at linebacker. No, Stellar had 22 tackles coming into tonight. Like it's it's only been two weeks. Yeah, and Davitz Davitz has to be up there as well. I mean, he's Davitz got thir he had 13 coming into tonight. But again, Davitz. Uh, certainly made his presence known today. Yeah. Um, and I think in the first two weeks, shigatano has been uh, lights out in the pass rush. But again, we'll, we'll have to see all the official numbers from Jose a little bit later in the week once he has a chance to compile everything. But yeah. Davitt's going to give Shigatano a run for, you know, team lead in sacks after tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Davitt has definitely gotten after the quarterback and he's got the blocked extra point. And then he's, he's just he's just making big plays. I mean, he had yep. the, the big run down there to set up Stellar's last touchdown. He's, he's been having a day today. So again, not a lot of changes here in personnel on either side uh, as, as both teams just kind of recognizing what this game is. And, uh, you know, as we, we come up three minutes left here in this one, the Red Trainers are up 28 to six. Wortman's gonna throw it. Good coverage by the Red Tornadoes in the area he was looking, so he's just gonna run and he's gonna try to get out of bounds. He's gonna take a big hit. Yeah, it looked like Yagodinsky over there on the sideline Ooh. making the tackle. Did a nice job there. And there's no no flag over there, so Yagodinsky must have been able to get him before he crossed the boundary. Yeah. And that's a that's a good play there by by Yagodinsky. Just getting out over there. He he had a play like that last game and he ended up getting flagged for yeah. it. Well and, and give credit where credit's due as well to uh to Spears and Farinato over there because they were trying to get the ball. Wortman wanted to throw it to Pfeiffer. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, to Pfeiffer, excuse me, and, and he was blanketed. That time around, that was a coverage sack, for sure. They're going to pitch it to Wolf. Does a good job of kind of just working through the wash there. He'll get over the 30. It's going to bring up fourth and about four. And again, that's a really good job by Diaz just setting that edge. He came up there. He... He kept his leverage outside on his blocker so that he could he could keep him from getting to the corner, turned it back into the safeties and the linebackers who came in and made the tackle. Yep, so it's gonna be fourth and five, 220 and counting left in this one. Wortman under center, he's got Wolf and Stemko behind him. Martin's in there on the wing. Pfeiffer to the left. Wortman's gonna throw it, he's looking for Piper. But he's, he had Hoffman across the middle, and he just missed him. So it'll be Red Tornadoes are going to take over on downs. First and 10 with 2.02 remaining in tonight's contest. Yeah, Jim, we'll see now what. I, I'm just I'm just curious. With, the, with the, a, a 22 point game and two minutes remaining now, you know the, the Tornadoes, they're going to come out, they're going to run the ball, they're going to they're gonna keep it on the ground, they're going to do what they can do. Right? I'd be curious to see who runs it, though. Well, that's, that's one thing. I'm curious to see what Coach Kaiser decides he's going to do. Do, do. do we use these three timeouts if we get some stops? Do we use them in a 22-point in a game with two minutes left? Or do we kind of chalk this one up? You, you, know, you, never want to, you never want to show your team that you're going to quit, but two minutes left is a lot, is a lot of time to put up 22 points if you, if you need it. So it's look like it's going to be Spears and Zarski in the backfield. Okay, yeah. Yeah, wholesale changes here. Not really on now the, the line. The Red Tornadoes are going to call a timeout here to try to get everything situated. They were making some changes, uh, but it looked like the line had stayed intact. It was yeah. really just, uh, instead of Feliciano and Stellar, it was Spears and Zarski. And I think that may have been the confusion there. You see Spears and Spears and Zarski go out there. So the linemen, you, know, you saw Nestico coming in late. You saw Shimko coming in there a little bit late. They're probably sitting on the sideline thinking, okay, we're gonna get some, we're gonna get some guys subbed in here for us. Yep, looks like I see Nestico and Kelly. Uh, 71 and 75 for the Red Tornadoes, who both were huge, played huge tonight, especially in the second half. Absolutely. Wearing down the Brave defense. They're going to go and, and enjoy the rest of their evening here. They were spelled by number 60, Ken Wetzel, and it looked like looks 76, like Kier, Kier yeah. going to come in there. Yeah, so this has been a really, like, a really good game here. A, a really good fourth quarter yeah. for Mount Carmel tonight. It's, it's been a yep. really good fourth quarter, and, and this is the way, I mean, you like to start the game the same way, but this is the, the way you definitely want to finish a game out. You know, getting some guys in there, getting some reps. 
This one's going to be Zarski off the right side. He's run through some arm tackles. Does a good job of staying on his feet. Ball is out. And the Braves have recovered it. So the Red Tornadoes are able to turn the Braves away on fourth down on the first snap. Fumble the football, recovered by the Braves. Looks like it was 11 Pfeiffer over there, because of course it was. That kid has been around the ball all day. Right, yeah, absolutely, Jim. And, and that's a that's a tough break there for, for Mount Carmel, you know, but uh, a break nonetheless, nonetheless for Chiglemi. Right, we'll see. Uh, again, it looks like no changes for the Red Trails defensively, at least. Uh, Wortman's going to hand it off to Wolf. Nowhere to go for Wolf. It looks like he got stuck in between. Chikatano was there and had fallen down in front of him. And, yeah. and Wolf had a hard time picking a direction. Right. <laughs> yeah, so so by the time he decided that he was just going to try and step over Chikatano, Chikatano had a chance to get a piece of him, and everybody had a chance to rally to the ball there. And let's remember, Matt Chikatano was 6'4". Yeah. So as he's laying down and stretched out there, that's a lot of ground that boy covers. <laughs> Portman's going to throw it this time. He's going to throw it. Looks for Hoffman again coming across the middle. And he's going to miss him. So the clock will stop with 1.10 left to play here at Shikolimi Stadium. Red Tornadoes on top, 28-6. Yes, well, this is, uh, like you said, all in all, a good fourth quarter for the big red hair. And uh, a, just a, a good, I, th I think it was, it was the Piper touchdown. It yeah. kind of woke them up, you know what I mean? It, it made them realize, like, okay, this is yeah. only an eight-point game. This is a one-possession game. And, and it kind of woke them up, and the horses took over. Portman's going to throw it again. And there it is. That's the same play they've been looking for Hoffman, and Farinato was sitting on it. So Hoffman will make the catch, but he's going to take a, a shot. He's going to be stopped short of the marker. It'll be fourth and two as we're under a minute remaining here. Yeah, that's a good that's a good job there by Wortman finally getting that ball out there to Hoffman, but also by Farinato making a good tackle. And to go back to your point before about the Pfeiffer play really waking the Red Tornadoes up, it's almost like in a, in a boxing match or UFC fight, like sometimes guys gotta get hit to realize that they're in a fight. Yeah, And that's absolutely. what happened. That was certainly a, a punch, you know, a, a gut punch for the Red Tornadoes there. And luckily, they were able to, to get back on their feet and rise to the challenge. Schaefer Knights takes the pitch. He'll get the first down. Yeah, and that's a. Uh, it looks like they set the ball quickly here yep. to, to get the clock yep. moving. So we're at we're about 12 seconds. Uh, never mind. Coach Kaiser's going to take a timeout here. 12 seconds left on the clock. Maybe they, looks, looks like one of his assistant coaches is, is kind of talking to him. He, he might have seen something that they can exploit, and they're going to try and try and put another one in here for, for good measure here at, at the end. So the Red Tornadoes, again, up 28-6. Three touchdowns out of Stellar, four extra points. Uh, but, yeah, I think the story has really been the way the offensive line responded here in the second half. Most definitely, and, 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 that, and that was the thing. We, you know, we talked about you know, them kind of, you, know, you said coach probably gave them the meeting and, yeah. and said, listen, you, you know, we need you guys, you're our horses, we need you to step up in the second half, and they definitely did that. Yeah, we don't get a chance to talk about those guys a whole lot. We're always following the ball, but again, that's, that's Matt Kelly, that's Nick Nestico, Kellen Geary, Dalton Moser, Noah Shibko, Kier's been in there. Um, just a lot of guys, right? We got Wetzel in there now. Just a lot of big kids down there that are doing a heck of a job tonight. And Wortman's going to throw it, and it's incomplete. It's going to fall incomplete, so the clock will stop again. And he had Hoffman as well. He, Hoffman was running, running open in the end zone, and unfortunately he just dropped it in there behind him. So now seven, seven ticks left on the clock. Second and 10 from the 20 for the Braves. I'm 
thinking this one's got to be the last. This is probably going to be the last play unless there's a quick incompletion here. Ortman's going to go back. And he's going to throw it across the middle. And it's going to be intercepted by Farinato. And they're going to run, and they're run the clock here. And they're just going to wind the clock. So that's going to end tonight's contest here at Shikolimi Stadium with the Red Tornadoes coming out victorious over the Braves, 28-6. to six. Yeah, Jim, that, I, you know, we, I, I keep saying it, that, that fourth quarter is, is kind of where we saw the Red Tornadoes kind of reach their, reach their full form. You know yeah. what I mean? It, it, it took them a while throughout the game today to get to that. But once they did get there, they, they started moving the ball well. Defense kind of woke up a little bit, got some stops. And those veterans on the, on the offensive side of the ball, on the line and in the backfield, took over the game. Well, and I think what's interesting, and, and maybe others would disagree with me, but you know, when, so they scored 28 points tonight. Yes. Really, only three of them were offensive touchdowns. But I would say, especially in the second half, that's the best that offense has looked all season, even though they put up, you know, 48 last week. For sure, yeah, and, and, and that's the thing. They really did a, a good job. They gelled well together, um, and they weren't, you know, they, they might not have been plays that were breaking big like, like crazy left and right, but it, they were consistently yeah. getting yardage. So I see, I see our buddy Jose over there, Dan. I don't know if you're going to get it. Looks like he's got his phone in his hand. Yeah, we might be able to get him. I'm trying to use my eagle eyes here to see if he's able to give us anything. But I think without, even without the numbers, as far as kind of our, our player of the games go, I think it's certainly stellar on the Red Tornado side. And, and on the Brave side, it's got to be Pfeiffer. Yeah, it, it most definitely Pfeiffer. Um, he played out of his mind. Uh, completely out of his mind. So we will see um, what they decide to do here. As we're, like you said, we're kind of waiting to see if, if Jose gets us any stats here. Looks like there's a little conversation going on over there. So we, we may not get that. I think uh, in the interest of, of time and, and to, our, to our good friends in the TV studio, we can probably wrap this up. If you want to see the numbers, you can certainly check. Um, you can check. Oh, hold on. But wait, we're going to get the stats <laughs> yeah, here. But wait, there's more. All right, so for the, for the, the game, final yardage stats, Mount Carmel rushing 32 carries for 302 yards, 12 first downs. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Excuse me, can you repeat that again? Did, 30, did you say 300? Yes, 300 <laughs> yards rushing, 300 yards on the ground this game, 302 to be exact. Can 12, you have can well, you have time. a quiet 300-yard game? Because that's where I think that's what I think we just saw. That's essentially what happened. Yeah, I mean they, there are a few plays that, that broke big, but really it, it was a, a very very quiet 300-yard game. Um, 12 first downs. Now we talked about how they just continually moved the ball and weren't able to get it in the end zone until that fourth quarter when they finally were able to close some drives out. Passing-wise, Feliciano threw one pass in the second half and ended up two of four for 53 yards. Um, and Chickalimi's rushing, 32 carries for 82 yards. They started getting some stuff to break there in the second yep. half. Uh, looks like six first downs and six of 19 passing for 122 yards for Chickalimi, but I believe 87 of them, those yards, coming on yeah. one play. Yep. So thank you, Jose, for getting the stats up here. Yep, thank you as always, sir. So again, we'll, for the, Red, for the Braves, we'll start with the Braves. Braves will fall to 0-3 on the on the campaign. They're going to go. Yeah, they, yeah, they're going to go 0-3, uh, and, and it looks like they're going to Wellsboro next week. Yeah, they'll get them here actually. Okay, okay, Wellsboro's coming yep. to Chickalini. And the Red Tornadoes will jump to two and one ahead of their contest with Montoursville back at the Silver Bowl. So uh, it's it's going to be tough sledding for the Red Tornadoes the next couple weeks. Montoursville. Um, Southern. Yeah, they're, de they're definitely hitting a tough stretch. Little Sox right around the corner. Danville as well. Um, all teams that are are playing very well currently. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if, if we see this team play the way they played in that fourth quarter, I don't think they're going to have trouble with anyone. Nope. So, so make sure you stick around and, and see how the next couple weeks go. Uh, but we're going to get out of here. Again, we're going to sign off from Chickalimi Stadium in Sunbury. The Red Tornadoes came out victorious. 28 to 6 over the Braves. I'm Jim Lesko. And I'm Dan Lesko. And for Jose Gonzalo, 
We will see you back at the Silver Bowl next Friday.